Live from the Maverick Center in West Valley City, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey. As tonight's a rubber match between the Grizzlies and the Trois Riviere Lions. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey. It's been a high scoring series so far as the Lions have outscored the Grizzlies 10 to 9 as we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Trois Riviere got a 6 to 4 victory last night or on Friday night as they had two goals and one assist from John Parker Jones. On Saturday, the Grizzlies got a 5-4 victory as Zach Seco scored the game when there were six and a half minutes left in regulation. It was a power play goal. It wasn't without a little bit of controversy as the referee initially called it a no goal, saying that Johnny Walker interfered with goaltender Philip DeRossier. They went to video replay, and they determined that Walker did not make contact with DeRossier. The goal stood, and then the Grizzlies held on for the 5-4 victory. It was an outstanding night for Dakota Raby. And, you know, you think about Raby having one goal and one assist on Friday night. He had two assists on Saturday. Grizzlies also got a good performance from Secos. Obviously, had the game winner, but he also had an assist. And Andrew Nelson had one goal and one assist. And, yes, both of those points came on the power play. As Andrew Nelson leads the league with 11 power play assists, he also leads the league with 12 power play points. Watch out for him on the power play tonight. And the power play has certainly been, well, mighty and powerful for the Grizzlies this weekend. They went two for six on the power play on Friday night. And last night, the Grizzlies had three power play goals and seven chances. So the Grizzlies are five for 13 on the power play in this series. And over the last nine games, the Grizzlies power play is 15 for 48. So watch out for the special teams here tonight. Trois Riviere does have a pretty good power play of their own but their penalty kill is dead last in the league. So watch out for the power plays on both teams here this afternoon. It played a big factor last night and here in the rubber match. Getting off to a fast start certainly going to be critical as after all, it's the third game in in just under 48 hours. You're talking about a lot of fatigue on the ice, especially as the game progresses. And it's going to be as much mental fatigue as physical fatigue. So watch out for whichever team gets a lead because usually more times than not, that team is able to hold on to a lead in this type of scenario. Should be a lot of fun here tonight. Grizzlies and the Lions. We'll be make sure that we'll be critique Guy Crenza downstairs. He is the PA announcer once again this evening. We got Kiki Crum hanging out next to us. Tim Broussard is taking the Sunday off. And we got a good one here in store as the crowd is starting to file in here. Grizzlies and the Lions meeting for the third and final time this season. One bit of roster m- move- movement. We talked about yesterday Aaron Tho being acquired in a trade with the Norfolk Admirals. Tho will wear number 28 for the Grizzlies this afternoon. He'll be making his Grizzlies debut. Tho played in eight games this season with Norfolk. Before that, played in two games with the Savannah Ghost Pirates. He's got previous experience in this league with Wheeling back in the 2020-21 season. He actually played against the Grizzlies back in late February of 2021 as a member of the Wheeling Nailers. And if I remember right, he played pretty well in that series. In 39 games that year, he had four goals and 15 assists. Three years ago, back in the 2019-2020 season, he played for the Kalamazoo Wings. And he actually played one game against the Grizzlies in early November of 2019. That season, he had 50 in 58 games. And that was the season that was cut short due to COVID. Uh, he had seven goals and 22 assists. So he had 29 points in 58 games. So you're talking about a guy that is capable of scoring, but obviously as a defenseman, we'll be watching out for his role as a defenseman. And essentially, he might take the place of Connor McDonald. We didn't see him out for warm-ups. Uh, remember, the Grizzlies' captain got hurt in the second period last night. And it looks like the Grizzlies will be without their captain this afternoon. We'll go over the lineups for both teams when we come back as we're in business on a Sunday afternoon. And you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by America First Credit Union. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, 
Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. Face off in about 15 minutes from now as it's the rubber match of the three-game series. Qual Riviere won 6-4 to four on Friday night. Last night, the Grizzlies ended a five-game losing streak as they got a 5-4 to four victory. Zach Seco said the game winner with about six and a half minutes left in regulation. That was a power play goal. Utah had three power play goals last night. Qual Riviere had two, so watch out for special teams here this afternoon. It's the third game in three days for both teams here in this set. And altitude could also play a factor. Fatigue, it's going to be interesting to see what happens this afternoon as the fans are still filing in here. Don't forget the Grizzlies' five-game road trip will begin on Friday night in Boise at Idaho Central Arena, taking on the juggernaut of the Idaho Steelheads, who I believe have a record of 13-2-1 this season. You talk about a team that's been amazing to start out. The Idaho Steelheads are in first place in the Mountain Division with an 844 points percentage and 27 standings points in only 16 games. The Wichita Thunder are in second place right now with a 643 points percentage, 18 points in 14 games. Kansas City's got a record of 8-5-1 and one on the young year. Remember, the Grizzlies did win two out of three games against Kansas City in early November on the road trip that the Grizzlies were on, that eight-game road trip. But Kansas City was the second of three stops, and the Grizzlies ended up winning two out of three games in their barn. But Kansas City is off to a fast start this season. The Rapid City Rush right now are in fourth place in the Mountain Division with an even 500 points percentage and an 8-8 eight and eight record. Grizzlies are in fifth place with a 467 points percentage, although the league standings will go off of standings points, not necessarily points percentage. Uh, Grizzlies right now in terms of how the league categorizes it, they're tied for fifth with Tulsa, who also has 14 standings points. And the Allen Americans are bringing up the rear with 11 standings points and a 393 points percentage. As for the Trois Rivières Lions, they've got an even 500 points percentage with a record of 7 7 and 1. They've got 15 points in 15 games, and they're in fourth place in the North Division. Other action in the league, there's five games. Four of them are going on right now. It looks like Tulsa and Wichita. That game is just getting underway. Looks like it's a goaltending matchup of Evan Beitenheis for Wichita and Daniel Manella for Tulsa. Both guys were the starting goaltenders for their, their respective teams last season. Wichita and Tulsa meeting at BOK Center. That one just underway. First intermission, Toledo and Wheeling are tied at one. John Albert has the Toledo goal, and Adamo has scored for Wheeling. Toledo's off to a little bit of a slower start this season, a record of just 5, 7, 0, oh, and 1. Wheeling has a record of 6 and 8. Early third period, Cincinnati and Iowa are tied at two. We talked about Matthew Boucher being on that Iowa roster. Right now he's been loaned to the AHL, and so he is not with the Iowa club as of right now. It does look like um, for Iowa, Kevin McKernan has one of their goals. And for Cincinnati, Griffin and Luganov, Luganov, uh, Luganov as the Cincinnati goals. That game tied at two early third period. Halfway through the third, Indy leads Kalamazoo by a score of three to one. We'll give you the starting lineups here in a couple minutes. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm on Twitter at Tyson on sports. Uh, I have not created a TikTok as of yet, although I might after the game. We'll have to see. It just depends on, you know, what, what my phone feels like doing there after the game. I might create a TikTok. I might not. I uh, stay tuned. NFL action here and uh, this Thanksgiving weekend. There was three pretty good Thanksgiving football games and some good ones here this afternoon. Jack Jaguars defeat the Ravens 28, 27 Jacksonville goes to four and seven on the year. Baltimore falls to seven and four dolphins defeat the texans 30 to 15 jets get a big game from mike white who replaced zach wilson as their starting quarterback white was outstanding with three touchdown passes the jets defeat the bears 31 to 10 as the jets record goes to seven and four the bears fall to three and nine Bengals over the titans 20 to 16 and the washington uh, washington commanders defeat the falcons 19-13. to 13. Games in action right now, early second quarter. Cardinals lead the Chargers 10-0. In fact, the Chargers are the favorite team of Nick Hayes, who's sitting in Section 107 this evening. Nick uh, doesn't like that score very much. Cardinals lead 10 to nothing. 
Early second quarter, Seahawks lead the Raiders 13 to 7. How about the Seahawks, who are 6 and 4, surprisingly, on the year? The Raiders are 3 and 7. Late first quarter, Chiefs lead the Rams 7 0. And just starting out the second quarter, 49ers lead the Saints 3 0. Some NHL action here on this Sunday afternoon. We know there's a lot of games on Saturday, and the NHL slate has five games. One of them has already gone final. Wild defeat the Coyotes 4 to 3. At 5 o'clock, the Jets are at the Blackhawks. At 6 o'clock, the Kraken are at the Ducks. And Vancouver is at San Jose. And at 8.30, the Senators are at the L.A. Kings. When we come back in one minute, well, I'll give you the lineups for both teams. It's the Grizzlies and the Lions meeting in the rubber match of this three-game set. This is the Grizzlies pregame show presented by America First Credit Union on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Welcome to the Maverick Center. Face off here in a few minutes as the Grizzlies take on the 12 Riviera Lions in the rubber match of this three-game series. Let's get to the starting lineups. First for the visiting 12 Riviera Lions who have a record of 7-7-1. Seven, seven, and one. They are led by interim head coach Marc-Andre Bergeron. This past Tuesday, Eric... Uh, yeah, he ended up getting, he ended up resigning, uh, the old uh, Lions head coach and, uh, he's replaced by Eric Belanger. Uh, he was uh, removed. He, uh, was, he resigned and Mark Andre Belanger, uh, Mark Andre Bergeron ended up replacing him. Let's just do this whole segment over again. <laughs> no, let's, uh, the starting goaltender is going to be Joe Verbetic, who in nine games this season has a six and three record with a 3.28 goals against an average and 886 save percentage. Verbetic got the start on Friday night and got the victory as he allowed four goals, but he did a good job in net. He's a young one, is Joe Verbetic. Uh, he's got an AHL contract currently with Lavelle uh, or uh, with the Rockets, and you, know, you talk about him being young. He's only 20 years old, played with North Bay in the OHL last season, had a record of 29, 10, and 6. Starting defensive pairing for the Lions, Olivier Gallipo, who's got an A on his sweater. In 15 games this season, he's got two goals and 10 assists. He played for the Fort Wayne Comets back in the 2020-21 season and won a Kelly Cup with Fort Wayne two years ago. He'll be paired up with Philippe Bureau Blay. Bureau Blay is making his 14th appearance this season. He's got six assists, no goals. He's 5'10 and 170 pounds. Starting forwards for the Lions, James Phelan. He was pretty active last night. He's a plus five on the season, six assists in 15 games. Nicholas Laverrier had two goals on Friday night, and he also scored one on a rebound last night. Watch out for him in front of the net because, if I remember right, two of his three goals this week have come on rebounds out in front. So watch out for Laverrier. He's a big body at 6'3 and 212 pounds. Normally a defenseman, but playing forward this week, John Parker Jones. He's got three goals and one assist this week. He had two goals and one assist on Friday night. He was the number one star of the game. Last night, he scored a power play goal in the first period. Watch out for him as a finisher on the Lions power play here this afternoon. He is 6'7 and 230 pounds and moves around pretty well. Normally a defenseman, he's playing forward this afternoon. Grisby at center ice as Guy Carenza, our good friend, is usually up here with us. He's the PA announcer filling in for Chris Han- uh, for uh, Chris Hagen as he introduces Trent Miner, the starting goaltender tonight. Miner in seven games this season has a record of 1-5 with a 3.59 goals against an average and 884 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing, Kyle Pouncey, who had a critical third-period assist to Keaton Jamison last night. 
He's got two assists in 10 games. He'll be paired up with Victor Bartley, who's got four assists in 10 games. Bartley had two assists last night and was the game's number three star. Starting forwards, Johnny Walker is becoming a fan favorite. He leads the Grizzlies with 52 penalty minutes, but most importantly, he's got five goals in his last nine games. Tyler Penner also in the starting lineup. He scored a goal last night. He's got two goals in 15 games. And Cam Strong who has two assists in 15 games. So starting defensive pairing is Pouncey and Bartley. Starting forwards are Walker, Penner, and Strong. Scratches tonight for the Grizzlies. Connor McDonald unable to go. Remember, he got hurt in the second period on Saturday night. We're not sure how long he's going to be out. James Shearer out once again. He got hurt in the third game of the season, and he was working out earlier today on the ice. Looks like he's coming along pretty well, and hopefully he'll be back in the lineup soon. And Jordan Stone, also a scratch. He's played in two games this season. Trent Miner, the starting goaltender, his backup this afternoon is Garrett Metcalf. Lucas Preak is a scratch. And uh, Lucas uh, recovering well from his injury. Uh, hopefully he'll be back in the Grizzlies lineup uh, before too long. It looks like we got some we got some youngsters on the ice right now, and they're going to be out there on the ice along with the Grizzlies. It's the first series that the Grizzlies have had against a team from Canada since December of 2019. Grizzlies won two out of three games against the Newfoundland Growlers that weekend. And then the Grizzlies, you know, they take on Trois Rivières. And because of that, we have both the American and Canadian national anthems. As the fans here at Maverick Center give a round of applause for everybody who has served our country and is currently serving our country. Now everybody will rise and we'll have what I think is a really good national anthem, the Canadian national anthem here on a Sunday afternoon at Maverick Center. It's the Canadian National Anthem, and now we'll have our the United States National Anthem. Is our national anthem here on a Sunday afternoon. I'm Tyson Whiting hanging out with Kiki Crum here high atop section 114 as it's a great day for hockey and a great day for two standings points. They're on the line. The series is on the line as Trois Rivières won 6-4 to four on Friday night. The Grizzlies got a victory 5-4 last night as Zach Seco's got the game winner with six and a half minutes left in regulation. 
kind of a late arriving crowd here on a Sunday afternoon as everybody getting out of church or just got done watching the early football games. We'll go over all the football scores during each of the intermissions. Trent Miner will get the start in net. It'll be his eighth appearance this season. He's got a record of one and five with a 3.59 goals against average and 884 save percentage. Miner is currently in the second year of a three-year NHL entry-level deal. His starting defensive pairing is Kyle Pouncey and Victor Bartley. Starting forwards are Johnny Walker, Tyler Penner, and Cam Strong. Joe Verbedek is in net for Trois Rivier. He got the start and the win on Friday night. He's got a record of six and three with a 3.28 goals against an average and 886 save percentage. Referee for the third straight game is Nolan Bloyer. The linesmen are Craig Peterson and Tyler Keston. Grizzlies wearing a black jersey with white numbers, white lettering, and professional green trim. Trois Rivières, if you've ever seen the Quebec Nordiques play hockey, it's very similar. White jersey, kind of an ice white with blue numbers, blue lettering, blue shorts, a little bit of red, blue, and white mixed in on the socks. As we're underway, Trois Rivières wins the faceoff. They're skating from left to right here in the first period. They'll pass out to the Utah blue line. Grizzlies picking off. Walker will feed it to Cam Strong on the right side. Strong skates towards a circle. He collides with Nicolas Laverriere. Uh, Lara Vier as it goes back to the corner, as it rolls back around Lara Vier, back in the corner gets it. He's got three goals this series over to John Parker Jones. He'll feed it to Sunrise for Phelan, who swung and missed as he tried to clear it into the left corner. Taken by Bartley, Grizzly skate from right to left over to Walker near side. He'll nudge it in as it rolls around the near wing boards out towards Verbetic as Grizzlies make their first line change of the game. As Andrew Nelson is out there, along with Aaron Tho in his first shift as a Grizzly. Tho acquired in a trade yesterday with Norfolk. Cameron Wright, my pick to click. Everybody make your pick to click as Stu's going to be the player of the game for the Grizzlies tonight. As it goes back towards Tho, he's in the Grizzlies zone. 6'2", 200 pounds. Played for Savannah and Norfolk earlier this season. Nielsen crosses the center. I still nudge it ahead to Secos. One time tap to Raby. Back to Secos. Take a shot. Saved by Verbetic. Raby skates in. Back in shot. Nana got poked away by a defenseman for the Lions. And the Lions come back the other way. Nicholas Gay, number 91, skates in to the right side. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the left point. Gay will feed it to Riley McKay. He'll drop it out for Centerami. He'll take a shot. Saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the left corner. And the Lions nudge it towards the near side. Centerami fires it around the boards. Cut off by Nielsen. He'll feed it to Raby along the near side. Grizzlies still in their own zone as Raby gets it back to Nielsen, who's behind the Utah net. Nilsson nudges ahead to Secos in the near side. Zach tries to get it to Cameron Wright. It's cut off by Cedric Momini. He'll throw it to the left side. Lions with a righty shot that goes wide. Momini is the Lions captain. And he gets the puck on the right side in the corner. He looks to center it. Picked off by Nilsson. It bounced off him and went to Aaron Tho. Tho around the far wing boards. It's cut off in the left point. Kept in is the Lions high slot. Shot goes wide and it bounces off the wall. And the Lions on the right side. Momini will feed it over to the left point. As the Lions wind and fire, that one goes wide. That was taken by Alex Breton, number 75. As Tebow throws it back towards the left corner, and the Grizzlies poke it away. Secos clears it out to center. Francis Tebow on the ice, number 28, and it's taken by Jonette. He'll take a lefty shot, saved by Miner as the shot was taken from the left circle. Trent makes a stop. He has saved all three he has seen so far as the Lions three shots to the Grizzlies one. Here, two and a half minutes into the game. Draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone once again. Taking the faceoffs, James Phelan against Keaton Jamison. Jamison scored a big goal in the third period last night to tie the score at four. As the Lions win the draw, they'll bounce off the end glass. Corey Thomas behind his net will throw it towards Dylan Fitz. Fitz wearing number 13, throws it across to Thomas. He's in the near corner. Corey Thomas, 6'5", 215, fifth game of the Grizzlies. Over to Jamison, who dumps it in. No icing as Joe Verbetic plays behind his net, and he'll whip it towards the far boards. Bryson Martin, who's got a point in three straight, throws it to the corner. Fitz gets it. He faked the shot, tried to get it to Robinson, and was picked off by the Lions. Olivier Gallipo gets it out towards neutralize over to Phelan. Phelan dumps it in from center ice in the left wing as it rolls around the boards. Miner cuts it off, and he'll give it to Thomas. Corey Thomas to the left side gets to center ice. It bounces off the skate of Nicholas Gay. Taken by Brett Stapley over towards Gay. Gay to Stapley. Shot saved by Miner. And the rebound goes out to the far side. Tyler Penner gets it. Penner scored a goal last night. He's got two this season. Over to Strong. Back to Martin in the Grizzly zone as Utah skates from right to left. Over to Bartley who had two assists last night. He tried to bounce it over towards Walker. It gets kicked away. 
Lions skate back in. Nicholas Gay gets back checked by Walker. I try to center it, but it hit the side of the net and rolls towards the right corner. As Grizzlies throw it back towards Martin, he'll get it to Bartley. Victor Bartley skates along the near side. He'll throw it ahead. I was looking for Tyler Penner. Pass in, connect. No icing as Johnny Walker skated over there. Puck along the near side. Trois Rivier gets it as Colin Billick, their leading scorer with 13 points this season. And the Lions will back it out to neutral ice. Now they throw it into their own zone for Alex Breton. He was the league's defenseman of the year back in the 2019-2020 season. He'll throw it to Billick, who dumps it in deep. Minder behind his net gives it to Pouncey over to Cole Tarchi. Joy will bounce it off the skater, and it goes back to Pouncey. Cole Tarchi looks like he's playing forward this evening. As it goes back to Pen, uh, Pouncey. Pouncey, Penner, they're all about the same. Pouncey throws it over to Bartley on the near side. He'll get to center ice looking for Simeone. He glanced off his stick and into the Lions zone. And the Lions lift it out to center ice, taken by Nielsen back in the Grizzly zone. Andrew skates down the middle. He'll throw a right wing pass that bounced off the stick of Jamison. And it goes back towards Nicholas Leriviere, number 55. As the Lions restart their attack, still no score, about five minutes in. As Phelan will feed it over to the left side. Lions enter the blue, enter the offensive zone. Phelan gets hit by Cole Tarchi, taken back by Utah. As Simeone crosses center ice. He'll throw it to his left, looking for Aaron Tho. Though looks like he moves around pretty well, 6'2 and 200 pounds. He previously played for Kalamazoo and Wheeling. Long range pass, looking for Phelan. He reached for it, but couldn't get it. And icing is called on the Lions with an even 15 minutes left in the first period. Tho comes off the ice, but he looks like he's. Got a little bit of quickness for somebody that's got a decent amount of size. Dakota Ray beyond the ice, as is Zach Sekos and Cameron Wright. Wright is my pick to click. I know Nick Hayes is going with Zach Sekos as his pick to click. Everybody make your pick to click on the live chat on the Grizzlies YouTube feed as to who's going to be the player of the game for the Grizzlies this afternoon. Still no score. Off the drop, rolls towards Verbetic, who covers up. And we get another whistle, 14.56 left here in the first period. Twelve Rivera has outshot the Grizzlies four to one. With that, the Lions were able to make a line change. It couldn't after the icing, and so they get some fresh skaters on the ice. But then again, as the game progresses, is anybody really fresh? When you think about uh, the fatigue factor starting to settle in once this game progresses, with this being the third game in less than forty-eight hours, Sekos will take the face off, and he wins it. Nelson in the left point takes a shot that goes wide. Raby behind the net, and he'll skate towards the left corner. Raby will skate towards his right. Now he's in the high slot. Gets it poked away by Nicholas Gay. Gay will backhand it out to center ice as McKay will feed it ahead. Lions skate down the middle. Veer off to the left circle. It'll take a shot and it gets blocked by Nilsson as it rolls back to Sekos in the near side. Sekos at neutral ice will dump it into Raby. Raby left circle. Shot saved by Verbetic and he holds on with 14.29 left in the first. Good idea by the Grizzlies. And I think one of their most impressive forwards so far this weekend has been Dakota Raby was outstanding in the third period on Friday night, really kept the Grizzlies in the game or maybe got them back in the game, even though they did end up losing 6-4. to four. He had one goal and one assist in the third period. Then last night had two assists, including an assist on the game winner on a pass out to Secos out in front when the Grizzlies were on the power play in the third period. Draw one by the Lions in their own zone. As they'll skate around the net, Alex Breton, who had a lot of ice time both on Friday and Saturday, gets to Connor Welsh, the smallest of all the Lions. Grizzlies dump it back in as Breton chases after it and Robinson trailing him. Cedric Momini gets over to Anthony Beauregard, the MVP in the league two years ago with Wichita. He'll feed it out to Welsh. He'll gain the line as he'll toss it towards the far side. Welsh around the boards for Momini. who played for three seasons with Rapid City. It's his second year with the Lions as Billick over to Momini. I try to feed it to Beauregard out in front. The puck rolled towards the right point. Breton spins it around towards the left side. As Fitz will bounce it off of Welsh, and it goes past him into the Lions zone. Grizzlies sneak in a line change. Lions will feed a right-wing pass to Billick. He'll step over the blue line, and he'll roll it back around behind the net. Jonette, I tried to feather one out in front. It kicked off of Miner's pads and goes to Bartley. As Victor will bounce it off the far glass. It looks like the arms raised by the linesman. Now the whistle blows. Icing on the Grizzlies with 13-34 left here in the first period. Grizzlies have taken two shots. Both of them have been pretty good looks. As oh boy, we're gonna get after guy for that. As he said, timeout on the ice, and uh, there is no TV, there is no media timeout after an icing call. So Kiki, him, and I are, are gonna make sure that we let guy know about that one after the game. <laughs> Draw goes between the lines, defenseman on to Joe Verbetic. 
one of those honest mistakes guy in his second game filling in for Chris Hagan as it goes towards the near side. And we obviously like guy. And we're just going to have some fun with him. Phelan throws out the center ice. Lions get it. Three on three. They enter the zone. They feed it over to Jonette. And I try to feather it out in front to Phelan. It goes wide. Phelan in the corner gets bounced by Penner. And the Lions will feed it up top towards Tebow. His first name is Francis. Now left point shot gets blocked in the left circle. Now around the net. Lions battling with Bartley. Bartley's got an A on his sweater this afternoon. And they feed it out in front. Walker tried to clear it out. Now Tebow right point shot. That gets blocked about five feet in front of Miner. Now they look to center it again and it bounced off of Pouncey. And the Grizzlies are able to carry it out of the zone. Strong gets to the offensive line and gets knocked down. John Parker Jones crosses the center ice and they'll dump it on to Miner. All right, Trent covered up, but kind of took a tricky bounce off the ice. But Miner was able to scoop it up and hold on with 12.38 left in the first. Now there's a timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. 12.38 left in the first period. No score. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey, presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. No score at Maverick Center. 12-38 left in the first period. Here in the rubber match of this three-game set, I'm Tyson Whiting. Last night, the Grizzlies ended a five-game losing streak, and they look to extend their winning streak to two as the Lions ended a five-game winning streak on Saturday, and they look to get back on their winning ways. Drawing the Grizzlies zone is won by Utah as Aaron Tho, wearing number 28, will toss ahead towards Raby. Raby gets bounced at the offensive blue line, and the Lions come up with it as they roll it along the near wall for Brett Stapley. who was a college teammate last season with Cameron Wright. He'll throw it ahead. Riley McKay, left circle shot, and gets deflected off the stick of Tho. His stick goes rolling into the corner, and he's playing without a stick as it bounces off the end wall. Stapley tried to nudge it ahead towards Gay as Tho without a stick pushes Stapley as it rolls back towards the right side shot, and a kick save by Tho. Now another shot. Tho gets a piece of that one as well. And another shot from Stapley, and Miner makes the save. How about Aaron Tho without a stick blocking a shot with his skate, and then it looked like he got a piece of another one. Aaron Tho's really impressed here in his First game of the Grizzlies already as he lost his stick but was able to continue and make an impact on his shift. Nielsen and Tho will come off. That's a pretty good defensive pairing with a lot of potential. Good deal by, made by Ryan Kanasiewicz with Norfolk. Norfolk in return got future considerations, which they might cash in on after the season's over. They'll do the draw over again in the left circle. Anthony Beauregard will take it. This season, Beauregard's got six goals and six assists in 14 games. Cedric Momeni had 20 goals in two separate seasons with Rapid City recently, so he's played against the Grizzlies quite a bit over his career. Grizzlies win the draw. Bryson Martin will fire it across and it rolls on to Verbetic, so no icing. As the Lions skate from left to right, they'll throw a blue line to blue line pass. Nobody was home. Martin gets it back for Utah. Bryson Martin will throw it behind his back for Keaton Jamison as the Grizzlies spread the ice. 11.40 left in the first, still no score. As Martin back in his... Own zone in the near side, throws it across towards Thomas. Back to Fitz, will backhand it. Oh, it doesn't hit the video board, but it came close. And it rolls towards Neil Robinson over to Jamison in the corner. Back to Robinson. Jamison gets it back. He'll throw it up top for Fitz. Now towards Bartley. Woodsheimer saved by Verbetic. Rebound goes out to the right corner. That was a blast by Bartley, saved by Verbetic. As Robinson throws it up top over to Jamison, but it goes over his stick and all the way down deep into the Grizzlies zone. Both teams will make a line change. About nine minutes in, still no score. Grizzlies have taken four shots. The Lions have taken five. Bartley back behind his own net. He's a very patient player and sees the game pretty well. Has over 100 games of NHL experience. Pass ahead towards Cole Tarchi. And that's going to be icing as the Grizzlies threw a pass to Cole Tarchi in Grizzlies territory. Pouncey 
towards Cole Tarchi, but the puck just kind of lifted over Cole Tarchi's stick, and Joey tried to chase over there to wave off the icing, but icing is on the Grizzlies. 10.53 left here in the first. I mentioned the Grizzlies were on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. They're also on Snapchat, as I learned during this last break. All the Grizzlies on Snapchat as well. Zach Sekos will take the draw for Utah. He's been outstanding for the Grizzlies this season. He's got a point in seven of his last ten games. He's made quite an impact in his first full season as a pro. Grizzlies win the draw. Simeone will toss it ahead towards Cole Tarchi. It's picked off by the Lions. They throw it towards Bartley in Utah's zone. Bartley gets it. He'll feed it over to the far side for Thomas. Now back to Bartley. Victor skates down the middle. He'll toss it ahead to Cole Tarchi. It tapped off his stick. No icing. Bermetic behind his net will throw it towards the far side. Cole Tarchi cuts it off. He'll take a shot that goes wide. He scored a goal from about that same spot last season. Joan, Parker Jones will throw it to the left side. Now lefty shots blocked. That was Leverrier that took it. And Parker Jones gets hit by Simeone. Lions roll it around to the right point. Cut off by Gallipo. He'll roll it back around to Phelan behind the net as he gets pushed by Pouncey. And Simeone will take over the play. Simeone feeds it out in front to Bartley, who will throw it back to Cole Tarchi on the far side. Joey will ricochet it off the far glass. Grizzlies quickly make a line change. Pass head to the right side. Gay with a right circle shot. Saved by Miner. Well, the transition game was pretty good for the Lions there. The Grizzlies were able to get it out to center ice. They quickly made a line change. Lions tried to catch the Grizzlies on the middle of that change through a pass to Gay, who skated in just outside the right circle. In fact, he took a mighty cut, but uh, Miner was able to make the stop. Trent has stopped all six he has seen so far. 9.57 left in the first period. Still no score. Penner will kick down, get kicked out of the faceoff circle. Cam Strong will take the draw. Strong played with Reading in South Carolina last year. Two years ago, he was a teammate of Tyler Penner's with Birmingham in the SBHL. Lions win the faceoff. McKay's shot saved by Miner. That shot was taken from the right point. Stapley will throw it over to the high slot. Gallipo will feed it to the right corner. It rolls around the boards. Now McKay on the left side. Skates towards his right. McKay now in the slot. Feeds it up top for Gallipo. Gallipo skates towards his left to take a shot. Kick saved by Miner in the butterfly position. Puck goes to the left side. Now McKay left circle. Shot saved by Miner. Trenton holds on as it looks like he's found a rhythm. And obviously, statistically, Miner's been off to a little bit of a slow start. But as we saw last season, when he's got his A game on, nobody can score on him. Miner, a former seventh-round pick by the Colorado Avalanche, Back in 2019, it's his second full season as a pro. He's got eight career shutouts as a professional. He was in the WHL with the Vancouver Giants, and he had a pretty good junior career before turning pro. Draw one by the Lions. They feed it up top towards Tebow, and he'll take a righty shot, and that gets blocked. He almost hit his own guy, Billick. Raby nudges ahead towards Cameron Wright. He gets around Tebow over to Breton at neutral ice. He'll dump it to the corner as it bounced off of Martin Stick. Bryce Martin skates around the net. As he gets around Billick, he skates along the far wing wall. Now Sekos will feed it across to Raby. Dakota races to the left circle. Sarns pass to right. He'll take a shot. Say rebound, shot, and a score! Cameron Wright took a shot from the right circle. It bounced off of Verbetic, and Dakota Raby put it away. And what a weekend for Raby. He was outstanding both on Friday night in the third period. He had a great night last night with two assists, and Dakota Raby picks up his third goal of the year. Cameron Wright's going to get an assist. As Raby was to the left side, threw it to right, right with a shot. It bounced off of Verbetic. It hit the post. And then Raby was able to get the rebound off the post and into the back of the net. Lions tried to clear it out, and it hit off a of Raby. And that's why the puck ended up in the back of the net. A Lion, actually, I see in a replay here on the big video board at center ice, tried to clear it out. It hit off a of Raby and into the back of the net. No distinct kicking motion, even though it did hit Raby's lower body, you know, hit, hit one of his legs. And that's why Utah leads one nothing. With less than nine minutes left in the first period. Grizzlies over in the offensive corner. Robinson looked to center it to Jamison. Jamison and Robinson collide to the side of the net. Jamison feeds it up top for Penner. He'll take a shot. That one goes wide. Puck ends up back towards Fitz. And rebound goes over to Nicholas Larivier. He'll skate along the left side. Three on four. Larivier with a shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to Larivier. He'll feed it up top to Gallipo. He'll skate towards the left circle. He looks to center it. Pass to Jonette goes wide off the near boards. Phelan over to Larivier. He'll feed it to the corner. Hits off a Gallipo stick, and he'll roll it around the near side. Right point. 
Lions will back it out of those offenses on themselves as Laravier will come out for a change. They'll feed it to Stapley, who's in the Lions zone. Lions skating from left to right. As Walker almost took it away, Lions skate across center ice. They'll feed it over to Stapley. He gains the line to the right side. Skates towards the corner. He gets pushed by Penner. Gets knocked down in the corner. Gallipo battling, and the puck rolls towards Cam Strong. We'll feed it towards Pouncey in the left corner. As Pouncey gets blasted, couldn't clear it out. Gay back towards the left corner. Lions couldn't handle it as it goes around the net to the right corner. Penner with a backhand pass, looking for Walker. Bounces off of him and goes to Gallipo. Right point shot blocked by Penner, and it goes from blue line to blue line. At the trois Riviere blue line, they peel back into their own zone. Gallipo will pass it ahead towards Stapley. He'll feed it across to McKay. He'll skate towards his left as he steps over the offensive line. Stapley on the right side, skates over to the mill. Gay with a shot saved by Miner. And the Lions throw up back over to center Rami. He'll take a shot. All oh, that goes wide. Didn't miss by much. Lions feed the far circle. And it's picked off by Cam Strong. He'll bounce it off of Matthew Brodeur. And it goes to Johnny Walker. Walker skates in one on two. He'll stop in the left circle, drop it off for Tho. Tho couldn't get a shot off as they had to bounce off of Brodeur. As Billick will feed it across. Lions skate in. Momini will drop it off to the left circle. Shot. That one goes wide. Goes back towards center Rami. He gets blasted along the boards by Tho. Though a physical player, it looks like he moves around pretty well. As Gall- is Beauregard over in the corner, being shadowed by right. He'll feed it to the left circle, shot saved by Miner. Right will bounce it over to the left side. Lions somehow kept it in. Lions feed it over to Senarami in the right circle, take a shot, kick saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to Raby on the near side. Raby near the corner, throw battling. He gets bounced by Billick. Risley's will bounce it off the near wall. Seko's battling with Senarami. It goes back to Raby. He skates back into his own corner. Over to Nilsson, who's behind Utah's net. Lions make a line change as Nilsson will throw it towards the near side, looking for Cameron Wright, but the pass didn't connect. Phelan hit Wright in the back to make sure that Wright couldn't collect the pass from Nilsson, and icing is on the Grizzlies. Six is uh, six minutes, 12 seconds is the time remaining in the first period. Grizzlies lead 1-0 as Dakota Raby scored 10-58 in with the assist to Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos. Sekos will take the draw in the far circle. Draw in the Grizzly zone, and it's won by Utah. Corey Thomas skates around Miner's net. He'll feed it over to Raby on the near side. Raby pitches out to Wright. He looked for a backhand pass, but didn't get very far. Welsh will throw it ahead, and it gets kicked by Martin. Over towards John Parker Jones. He bounces it off of Cameron Wright and goes back to Thomas. Now the Grizzlies throw it towards Seco. So he'll tap it deep into the Lions zone. Grizzlies make a line change. Less than six minutes left in the first period. Utah leads 1-0. Grizzlies scored first last night. They are 5-2 and two when scoring first this season. Lions back towards Connor Welsh. He'll feed it to the left side. Lions step over the offensive line. Skeet towards the left circle. Jonette with a shot that glanced off the stick of Martin and goes out of play. That was actually James Phelan that took that shot that flew off the protective netting. There's a timeout with 535 left in the first period. Grizzlies lead 1-0. We're back in one minute. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. 5.35 left in the first period. Draw on the Grizzly zone is won by Utah. Grizzly skating from right to left. Dakota Raby scored 10.58 in with the assist of Zach Sekos and Cameron Wright. Grizzlies skate into the offensive zone, but they're offside. Good job by the Lions protecting their blue line. Draws going to come back to neutralize. Dylan Fitz having a conversation with Craig Peterson, the linesman. Fitz is a guy to watch out for. He's got two goals this season. Robinson's to the left wing, taking the draws. Keaton Jamison, who's played pretty well in the two games this weekend. 
Defensive pairing is Bryson Martin and Corey Thomas. As a draw, one by the Lions. As Tebow will throw it to the far side, Gallipo looking for McKay, a bounce off of him. Pitts will dump it into the right corner. Joe Verbetic, who's 6'6 and only 20 years old. He'll throw it to the right side in the corner, taken by Jamison. As he surveys, throws it to Robinson. Neil's got one goal in five games this season. Look to get it back to Fitz. Now he'll roll it around the boards. Martin keeps it in left side. Over to Thomas. He'll take a shot. Kick save by Verbetic. Puck ends up in the left corner. Robinson gets bounced by Tebow. Now Fitz with a hit of Tebow as it goes towards Thomas. Looking for Fitz behind the net. Picked off by Gallipo. Now the Lions nudge it ahead to McKay. So get it back to Gallipo, who crosses center ice and dumps it in. And the puck flies out of play into section 117, about row three. It looks like a fan comes away with a souvenir. It's about the one row there where we got some fans in that section. And so it looks like they come away with the game puck. They're going to have a story that they'll tell for the next 20 years. Hey, remember that Sunday afternoon at Maverick Center? We were sitting in section 117 over in the corner, and we got a game puck that flew our way. That puck's going to be, I, who knows where that puck's going to be. It's either going to be in a trophy room or it's going to be used out back. Grizzlies in the offensive zone. Bartley will throw it to the right corner as Kolatarchi delivers a hit. Bounces off of Kolatarchi. He's playing four tonight. As the Lions get it, Cedric Momini will lift it into the air. It bounces into the Grizzlies zone. Pouncey will bounce it over the far wing boards. And it goes back to the Lions, who are skating from left to right here in the first period as we see it from high atop section 114. Lions with a rink-wide pass to Billick on the right side. He'll enter. Two on three over to Momini. Trying to drop it off for Beauregard. Grizzlies nudge it back to center ice. Cameron Wright gets it. He gets hit by center Ami. Wright dumps it in on to Verbetic. As Wright gets a stick back as he had lost it. Billet crosses center ice and dumps it to the left corner. Aaron Tho gets it. Tho looks like he moves around pretty well over to Nilsson. Andrew in the near, near side hits it off of center ice. It bounces off of Jonat's glove. It's off of Jonat's glove again. He'll feed it to Phelan. Phelan at neutral ice will dump it in. As Grizzlies got back defensively. Rolls towards Miner off the end wall. And Miner makes the save. And after the whistle, it looked like John Parker Jones got pretty close to Miner. Dakota Raby, who's... A little bit shorter than the 6'7", John Parker Jones going after him a little bit. I don't think the Grizzlies as tall as Nielsen and Thomas can be defensively. I don't think anybody's about the size of John Parker Jones. You ever know what it's like to see an NBA player in skates? That's That'd be about what John Parker Jones is. 6'7", 230. Normally a defenseman, but's playing forward this weekend, and he's one of the, been, you know, one of the Lions' best forwards, if not the best forward on their team. Draws in the right circle. 3.36 is left in the first period. Utah leads 1-0. It was an even-strength goal by Dakota Raby with Wright and Sekos getting the assist. Draw one by Utah. They throw it to the right side. Parker kept it in. Now they get to the left side. And Brodor with a shot. That gets blocked. Grizzlies will fling it out to center ice. Run down by Gallipo, wearing number 26. He won a Kelly Cup with Fort Wayne back in 2021. As the puck bounced off a body, goes deep into the Grizzlies zone. Thomas will skate towards an air side. Corey Thomas ahead to Seco, so cross center ice. He'll veer off to the right as he gets pushed by Brodeur. Grizzlies enter the zone, right point. They try to fire away, and the puck disappears out of play with 3.02 left in the first period. During the first intermission, we'll go over some scores from around the league. We'll recap the first period. Might even turn Kiki's mic on to get her, her perspective on this first period, she actually was on a vacation to Bora Bora. She showed me some pictures of it. I got to say, if there's ever a hockey team or a sports team in general in Bora Bora, I get dibs on that job. Bora Bora looks like a beautiful country. I can't point it out on the map, but it looks like a place I'd want to live. Draws in the right circle of the Lions zone, won by the Lions. And Trois Rivier will bounce it off the far wall. And at center ice still, and Fitz gets it. He'll peel back into his own zone. Fitz will skate towards the near side. He avoids a check. I got uh, McKee got a little bit of him, or McKay, that is. Riley's his first name. As the Lions back deep in their own zone, will toss it off of Nicholas Gay, battling with Robinson. And Fitz will bounce it off a of Lion as Jamison on the right side gets it. Keaton skates towards the right point. He'll throw it to Robinson. He'll take a shot. Saved by. Verbetic, Robinson gets it back. He was in the right side when he took the shot, but now he's on the left. Look for Fitz. Fitz collided in the corner. Now, Trois Rivier comes back the other way. Lions cross center ice. They'll get it to Gay on the right side. They'll drop it off for Stapley. Stapley looks to feather it out in front. It goes past the body out in front of the net to the left corner. 
Grizzlies on the attack again. Over to Penner, who dumps it to the near corner. Penner gets bounced off the boards by Connor Welsh. Santino Centerami over there as well. Taken by Nicholas Gay. They'll cross center ice. GUAY is his last name. Over to Momini. He's in the right point. They'll feed it across. Over to Beauregard. He'll skate down the middle. Righty shot. Saved by Miner. Rebound. Lions to the left side. They couldn't shoot it initially. Momini has it. As he'll get it back to Beauregard. He skates in the left circle. Takes a shot. Glove saved by Miner. Trent holds on with 142 left in the first. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone, but Trent Miner's off to a good start here this afternoon, stopping all 13 so far. Anthony Beauregard will take the face off against Zach Sekos. Sekos and Fitz, as well as Victor Bartley. There's three A's on the for the Grizzlies as the captain, Connor McDonald, out of the lineup. We're not sure how long he's going to be out as he got hurt on Saturday night. Lions rolled around the boards after winning the faceoff. It's over in the right corner as Pouncey battling. Raby over there. Raby's been outstanding this weekend over to right. Right's cross the center ice and dumps it in. Sekos ch- chasing after on the right side. Matthew Brodeur with plenty of pro experience of about a decade. Puck rolls to the left side. Bartley, with a lot of experience of his own, 34 years old, gets held up in the corner by Gallipo. Two on two in the corner, right battling as well. Puck squirts towards Brodeur. Raby put, poked it away. Now right in front of the net, and he gets spun around. Where's the puck? Grizzly score! Jover Bennett thought that he had covered up, and the referee spotted the puck behind the goal line. Grizzlies have taken a 2 nothing lead. Victor Bartley looks like he has scored his first of the year. Well, that was an odd play. I think the referee might look take another look at it. Looks like the Lions want the referee to take another look at it. As Trois Rivier argues the call. Boy, Wright was out there in front. He got hit towards Verbetic. Wright took a shot, and then Verbetic was in the way. Wright got pushed. Where was the puck? Verbetic thought that he had covered up. There was daylight, and Victor Bartley nudged it into the back of his net. So that looks like a good goal for Bedick. Wasn't sure where the puck was. He was It was at his ankle. And then Victor Bartley was able to spot it, and he just kind of extended his stick and was able to get it past for Bedick. It's the Grizzlies, two and the Lions, nothing, with 108 left in the first period. Bartley gets his first goal of the season. Cameron Wright gets his second assist of the first period. And Dakota Raby now has multiple points in back-to-back-to-back games as Raby... Gets an assist. Now to the slot. Shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the right side. Connor Welsh in the right point. Fires a lefty shot. It bounces off of the stick of Larivier. And over in the corner, John Parker Jones battling. 40 seconds left in the first period. As Welsh over to the right side. Gets hit in the corner by Jameson. Though will feed it across to Nilsson. Nilsson gets hit. Jones around the net looking for a wraparound. Grizzlies will poke it back towards the end wall. As Utah will feed it out towards center ice, past Neil Robinson. As the Lions chase after it, as Utah leads 2 0 on goals from Victor Bartley and Dakota Raby. Raby with one goal and one assist tonight. Cameron Wright already with two assists. Lions cross center ice. They'll skate into the left. As Larivier skates towards the right side, I try to feed it to Stapley out in front. Pass goes wide. It goes towards center ice. Pass to the uh, blue line of Utah is picked off by Secos. Now to Thomas at center ice, he'll dump it in. And that will do it for 20 minutes here at Maverick Center as Dakota Raby gave Utah 1-0 lead, 10-58 in. Wright and Sekos with the assist. And then Victor Bartley scored 18-52 in to make it a 2-0 game. Wright and Raby with the assist. Well, that was a fun first 20 minutes of play. Probably the best period that Trent Miner has played all season, stopping all 15 Aaron Thoe, the new defenseman in his Grizzlies debut, looks like he's going to be a keeper. And overall, just a very positive first 20 minutes for the Grizzlies as it's the final game of the six-game home stand in the rubber match. 12 Riviere won on Friday night. Grizzlies won 5-4 to four on Saturday, and they're off to a good start leading 2-0 after one period. When we come back, we'll recap the first period, and we'll also get a recap of what Bora Bora looked like from Kiki Crum and also get her perspective on the first period, and we'll also go over some scores from around the world of sports. It's the Grizzlies 2 and the Lions nothing. This is Grizzlies Hockey presented by Rio Tinto. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, 
you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Sigfrid and Jensen intermission report. As Utah leads 2-0, two unusual goals out in front of the net. Grizzlies had about a two-on-two situation about 11 minutes into the first period. Cameron Wright was skating along the right side. Dakota Raby was cutting towards the left. Wright took a shot from the right side. It bounced off of Joe Verbetic. And then you know, Verbetic, you know, the puck kind of stayed in the crease. And then it hit a line. I thought it might have hit, like, the post and then went to Raby. It hit a lion who tried to clear it out. It bounced off of Raby and ended up in the back of the net. Now, you know, when it hits a lower point, you know, when it hits your leg and goes in, you know, obviously you think about was it a kicking motion. There was really no kicking motion as Raby wasn't really anticipating the puck coming towards him. And as he was just skating towards the net, everything happened so fast. And before you knew it, the Grizzlies had taken a one nothing lead. They didn't look at it. And it was pretty obvious when they showed the replay on the big video board here at center ice. And I got to say that video board has been a game changer. because we're able to see replays after goals and big plays. Um, and it, it did really just show that it bounced off a of Raby and ended up in the back of the net. And really, there was no distinct kicking motion. And the referee, who was in the right spot, made the right call. And Utah led one nothing. Time a goal, 10:58 in. Raby with his third goal of the season. Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos with the assist. So Dakota Raby, who had one goal and one assist on Friday night, two assists on Saturday. He's already got a multiple point game as Raby got an assist, as well as Cameron Wright, who got an assist in both of Utah's first period goals. And kind of another unusual play out in front of the net as the shot was taken. Verbetic had thought that he had covered up. He wasn't really sure where the puck was. I mean, he's a big guy at 6'6", so it's possible that, you know, when the puck is down there, you know, with his size, he may not be able to spot the puck nearly as easy as maybe a shorter goaltender would. So he was trying to find it, and it was at his ankle, and the referee was able to see the puck, so we didn't blow the whistle. Victor Bartley spotted it and just kind of tapped it. You know, just you know, kind of like they say in Happy Gilmore, just tap it in. He just found the puck and tapped it in. And, you know, there was no disputing it by the lines. There was maybe an initial thought of, okay, where was the puck? Did he cover it up? And, and the referee was able to spot it easily and know that it wasn't covered up. And so the play went on, and Victor Bartley – uh, was Johnny on the spot. We talk about the experience of Bartley. It seems like we talk about it time and time again. You know, he picked up his first goal of the season here with a minute two left in the first period as Utah leads 2-0. 12 Riviere outshot the Grizzlies 14-11 to in the first period. I think it was Trent Miner's best period this season, and uh, hopefully he'll carry that on to, into the next two periods. But, 
you think about the experience of Victor Bartley, it's really in plays like that, being able to see the ice and with as much experience as he has, you know, the game is slowing down to the point where, you know, on that sort of play, just a little bit of curiosity of, okay, where is that puck? Does he have it covered up? And being a heads-up player, knowing that, you know, maybe him being a taller goaltender, it it might be tougher for him to spot it. So Bartley was able to skate in and tap it into the back of the net. You know, as far as the first goal is concerned, that's another case of being in the right place at the right time. Raby was skating down the middle. You know, he was probably a passing option for Wright, but Wright had an open shot from the right circle. And so Raby just skated over there. Hey, you never know. Puck, puck might bounce off you and go into the back of the net, or you can end up getting a rebound or some sort of play like that. You know, we saw Penner was hanging out on the left side yesterday and scored a goal on a rebound off a of fit shot. So for the Grizzlies, what's really changed here in the trois Rivier series, you know, they scored nine goals in the first two games of this series and two more in the first period. What really changed in this series compared to the Idaho series where they just scored three goals in three games Seems like the Grizzlies have done a much better job of finding a way to get in the right place at the right time. And that's where Utah, really both of their goals came from. Only two scoring chances by the Grizzlies in the first period. Both of them found the back of the net. Trois Rivera had four scoring chances. There was not a single penalty in the first period. And that's instrumental because Trois Rivera, you know, special teams wise, they are tied for fourth in the league with a 25% power play they've got one of the best power plays in the league but the lions have the worst penalty kill in the league you know utah has five power play goals for two games in this series and their power their penalty kill is only 66.1 percent grizzlies have been pretty good on the power play the penalty kill's been okay you know they're at 78.2 percent on the season but it is kind of nice to keep the game moving along and not having any penalties nor were there really any penalties that that could have been called or should have been called and were missed it was a pretty clean game and i wonder you know we always joke every now and then third game in three days the teams might be too tired to go out and commit penalties and i think you see a little bit of a a slower pace to this game but maybe a little bit more of a under control type of pace of play and i think that ends up benefiting both goaltenders after all trent minor didn't play last night neither did joe verbetic on the lions side so those guys are well rested you know both guys played friday but they had a day off and so if you're able to see the puck, you know, minor in, in this case, you know, seems like in the type of games when he's got his A game, as he did uh, often last year, unless you're going to get some fluky bounce or redirection, you know, you're not just not going to score on him. That's just the way he was at times last year. And it looked like in the first period, we saw the Trent minor that we saw a lot last season. And I'm really interested in seeing how he plays here in the final 40 minutes of play. Giveaways, Grizzlies had three, and Trois Rivier had two. Now, here on Press Row, we have one rule. Actually, we have like three rules. One, we treat everybody as equals. Two, we uh, we try to make sure that we always leave with a smile and a laugh because, after all, we're at a hockey game. We're supposed to have fun. And three, if you're going to sit right here, well, we're going to have to throw you on in the intermissions. That's just the rule. Kiki Crumb's hanging out with us near high top section 114. She just came back from a vacation in Bora Bora. Kiki, I was not very good in geography class. Where exactly is Bora Bora? Bora Bora is in the French Polynesia. So um, Tahiti, by Tahiti, kind of by Fiji a little bit, more like down by Australia. Hmm. All I know is the pictures you showed me looked like it was the most beautiful country I've ever seen. It really was. Then again, I've not been in any other country other than the United States of America. So Bora Bora, I imagine a lot of countries looked like Bora Bora, but it looked like it was just an outstanding place. So hopefully it wasn't Bora Boring for you. No, not boring at all. <laughs> Definitely put it on your bucket list. Sad thing is I prepared that line all weekend and was finally able to use it. <laughs> hopefully Bora Bora is not Bora Boring. But... No, it was not. That was a fun first period for the Grizzlies. Dakota Raby's been outstanding all weekend, and my pick to click was Cameron Wright, and he certainly showed up pretty well as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think you said, like, they'd probably be fatigued, but I'm not seeing that at all. I'm seeing just more controlled, smart, patient hockey, which um, is what we need, and I can definitely tell why the first two games were high-scoring games. Yeah, both teams have a lot of offensive firepower. What do you expect here in the next 20 minutes? You know, the second period certainly is going to be a big barometer as to who's going to win this game. Can the Grizzlies maintain this lead? I think so. I think we had control in the first period, but it was mostly just, you know, um, 
Ravy and Sekos. And I think in the second period, I think they're really going to show through again. A great top line of Sekos Wright and Raby had an outstanding first period. Kiki, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you during the second intermission. Thanks, Tyson. That's just the rule. You, you sit up here. We have to put you on the air, and we got to ask you about Bora Bora. And uh, I got to say, the, the, it looks like an outstanding country. Hopefully some sports teams end up showing up in Bora Bora because, after all, that seems like a pretty nice place to live. Uh, it doesn't look like you really have the winners like you have here in Utah. When we come back to the Siegfried and Jensen intermission report, we'll go over some scores from around the world of sports. Once again, here at Maverick Center, the Grizzlies lead the Lions 2-0. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Siegfried and Jensen. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are gonna help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to Maverick Center. First intermission, Utah leads 2-0. Dakota Raby already has one goal and one assist. Cameron Wright has two assists. Victor Bartley with a goal that was scored with a minute eight left in the first period. Week 12 of the National Football League. Games have gone final. The Panthers go to 4-8 and eight on the season. They defeat the Broncos 23-10. to 10. Russell Wilson once again had a bad game, and it's been a terrible season for the Broncos, who are now 3-8 and eight on the season. But thank goodness since we're an eight-hour drive from Denver as uh, we end up watching Bronco games week in and week out. Hopefully one of these weeks they'll figure it out and show somebody else for the early window. In overtime, the Cleveland Browns defeat the Buccaneers 23-17. to So Cleveland gets their fourth win of the season. Tampa Bay falls to 5-6. and six. Tom Brady had two touchdown passes. Nick Chubb had 116 rushing yards and one touchdown. And the Browns get an overtime winner uh, over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Looks like Nick Chubb had the overtime touchdown for Cleveland in the victory. They get their fourth win of the season, 23-17 the final. And a close one in Jacksonville. The Jaguars defeated the Ravens 28-27. Jaguars have lost a ton of close games, but they're getting better. Good day for Trevor Lawrence, who had 321 yards passing and three touchdowns, no interceptions. Jaguars go to 4-7. and seven. Buc- uh, Ravens are now 7-4. and four. Dolphins defeat the Texans 30-15. to 15. Texans only have one win this season. Boy, if you're a Zach Wilson fan, this might be tough to say is Mike White could end up being the future quarterback of the future for the New York Jets. White had 315 passing yards and three touchdowns, no interceptions. Trevor Simeon started for the Bears. He had one touchdown and one interception, 179 yards. Jets defeat the Bears 31 to 10. Zach Wilson was the third string quarterback as he has been benched. Mike Wright, well, uh, Mike White replaced him, and he was outstanding in his first start of the season. Bengals over the Titans, 20-16. to 
Joe Burrow had one touchdown pass, 270 yards. Samaje P. Ryan with one touchdown run. No touchdowns, no interceptions for Ryan Tannehill. And Derrick Henry was just held to 38 rushing yards on 17 carries. Bengals go to 7-4. and four. Titans are still are now 7-4 and four on the season. Washington Commanders defeat the Atlanta Falcons 19-13. Taylor Heineke started for Washington, had two touchdowns, one interception. Marcus Mariota, one touchdown and one pick for the Falcons. Commanders go to 7-5. and five. Falcons are 5-7. and seven. Game's going on right now. 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Cardinals lead the Chargers 17-14. Early third quarter, Raiders lead the Seahawks 24-20. At the half, Chiefs lead the Rams 13-3, and the 49ers lead the Saints at halftime 10-0. Grizzlies have hit the ice. We'll have second period action here shortly. A smart move by the officials to come out at the same time the Grizzlies came out. You know, the officials come out before the players, and you know, they end up getting booed loudly. The officials came out the same time as the Grizzlies. We're not going to boo the Grizzlies, so a smart move by the officials. I'm surprised more officiating crews don't do that more often uh, before each period. Trent Miner stopped all 14 he saw in the first period, and if you joined us late... Grizzlies lead 2-0 as Dakota Raby scored 10-58 into the first right and Secos with the assist. And then Victor Bartley got his first of the year with 108 left in the first period right and Raby with the assist. Next time I see Tim Broussard, I might ask him, I mean, Broussard's not necessarily a tall guy himself. He's a, a goaltender and he likes to play on the weekends. Um, Joe Verbedek being six foot six and the puck near his ankle, you know, having, having a tough time locating it. Is that kind of an issue that taller goaltenders have sometimes and locating the puck when it's you know on your lower body there you know when you got big pads and things like that and obviously being a taller goaltender your head's a little bit further from the ground so I wonder if that plays a factor here and there it did play a factor there as he had a tough time locating it he had thought that he had covered up and then Bartley came in and tapped it in for Utah's second goal Grizzlies have the forward line of Johnny Walker Cam Strong and Tyler Penner, that's the three forwards that started the game. Two defensemen that started the game are out there, Victor Bartley and Kyle Pouncey. Waiting for 20 minutes to be put on the stadium scoreboard clock. You've been tuned into the Siegfried and Jensen intermission report. We'll have it again during the second intermission. The fan holds up a sign that's shown on the video board. This is his first hockey game, and it's also his birthday. Hopefully he's having a good time as the Grizzlies lead 2-0. Final game of the six-game homestand. Grizzlies will be on the road for a two-game set against Idaho next Friday and Saturday. And then the following week, the Grizzlies take on the Jacksonville Icemen, who have no less than four former Grizzlies on their current roster. Face off one by Trois Rivieres. They're skating from right to left here in the second period. Grizzlies from left to right. Strong over to Walker. Skates in two on three. He'll stop at the point. I try to feed it out in front to Penner. It goes wide. Right point. Pouncy with a shot, glove saved by Verbetic, and Walker got a little bit too close to Verbetic for the Lions' liking as Walker in a bear hug with a Lions player. And obviously, a lot of those confrontations just start out by an offensive player getting a little bit too close to the goaltender for the opposing team's liking. And really, it's nobody's fault. I mean, the Lions got to protect their goaltender, and you know if the puck was on the other side, the Grizzlies' defenseman would be protecting Trent Miner at all costs. Johnny Walker in an arguing match with Philippe Bureau Blay. Walker with some more words for the Lions. James Phelan with some words for Walker. Johnny leads the Grizzlies with 52 penalty minutes on the season. Lions taking a lot of time to make their line change. This draws in the Lions zone in the right circle. Actually, it looks like it's going to be in, yeah, it is going to be in the right circle. Grizzlies taking a little bit of time making their line change as well. Looks like nobody's got dinner plans. From what I hear, Nolan Blair's flight leaves tomorrow, so he'll take the whatever time he wants. Grizzlies win the draw. Cam Strong gets tripped up, and the official spotted it. We're going to have our first penalty of the game as Cam Strong got tripped up at the blue line. As Pouncey feeds it across off the board, Strong collides with a lion skater. Philip Bureau Blay touches it up behind the lion's net. Tripping should be the call as Cam Strong hit the ice and the referee's arm went up. 
Looks like Bureau Blay is the one arguing the call with the referee. Looks like he's the one going to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious, and you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's best DUI defense team, Rogers and Russell. You see the Rogers and Russell sign if you're at the arena as it is behind both benches. Draw one by Utah. Shot saved by Verbetic. Couldn't see who got a piece of that. Might have been Walker. Cameron Wright's out there along with Zach Sekos. Nielsen and Raby with the assist are out back. Connor McDonald got hurt last night, and he is not in the lineup this evening. James Shearer and Jordan Stone also out. That's the three skaters who are scratches for the Grizzlies this evening. Face-off taken by Secos and won by Secos. Utah leads 2-0 as Nilsson throws to Raby on the right side. Raby over to Secos. Secos along the near wall. Made a head nod to Raby. Raby skates towards the near goal line. Now Secos in the corner throws it up top for Nilsson. Nilsson back to Secos. He'll feed it across to right. One-timer saved by Verbetic. Right gets it back in the left side near the boards. Puck stays towards him as he gets pushed in the back. Wright keeps his feet. Well, bouncing off of Nicholas Gay, trying to clear it out. It bounced off of Wright. Walker over behind the net, over to Sekos. Now to Wright. He's in the right point. He'll feed it across to Raby, just outside the left circle. Raby throws to the far goal line for Walker. Walker surveys. He'll get it to Wright. Wright's on the far side, takes a shot, gets blocked, and the Lions clear it out. Grizzlies will... Make a change as well. Nilsson will chase after it as he gets it from Miner. As Nilsson skates around his net. Now Nilsson back towards the near side. As he's over there along with Victor Bartley. Nilsson still in his own zone. He leads the league in power play points with 12. As Nilsson feeds over to Bartley. And Andrew will skate towards the bench. Replacing Nilsson will be Bryson Martin. As Bartley skates down the middle. Still in his own zone. He'll throw a right wing pass to Martin. Fresh on the ice. Martin gains the offensive line, spins over towards the left side. It kicked off a skate, rolls towards Verbetic, who covers up. No shot attempted by the Grizzlies, but Verbetic did cover up. 18.07 left in the second period. Trois Riviere makes a change. A lot of fun here at Maverick Center. Don't forget the next homestand for the Grizzlies will be a two game set. Against the Kansas City Mavericks. That's going to be on December 17th and 18th. As Grizzlies win the faceoff, they're in the offensive zone after making a line change. Robinson will drop it off for Penner. Tyler back to Robinson. He skates around the net. He'll get it to Martin on the right side. Now up top to Bartley, who skates towards his left, and he'll feed it to the far corner for Pen Penner. Back to Martin. He takes a shot that gets blocked. Trois Rivera trying to clear it out. Martin keeps it in. Martin gets spun around. Actually went heels overhead. Puck ed exited out to center ice. Lavarier jabs Martin in the knee. The play goes on. Fits over to Martin in the right point. Bryson skates towards his left. He scored a power play goal last night. Over to Fitz. Right side takes a shot that goes wide. He was looking for the corner and missed. Martin will drop it off for Robinson as Trois Rivier out of the penalty box. Bureau Blay will rejoin the play. Fitz with a backhand shot saved by Verbetic as the puck goes back to Fitz on the right side. As Trois Rivier, one for one on the penalty kill so far tonight. Martin with a shot that goes wide off the end wall, and Verbetic covers up with 17 13 left in the second. Both teams have 14 shots on goal. Utah found the back of the net twice in the first period. Dakota Raby, 10 58 in, and Victor Bartley, 18 52 into the first period. Draws in the left circle. Christian Simeone will take it. He's out there along with Keaton Jamison and Joey Kulatarchi, who's a playing forward here tonight. He played forward last night as well. Puck rolls around the boards, taken by Pouncey. He'll throw it to the corner as Alex Breton collides with Simeone. Jamison around the net. He's now on the far side. He'll throw it up top to Corey Thomas, who couldn't reach it, as it goes into the Grizzly zone. Miner skates to the far side of his net, and he'll drop it back off for Pouncey. Kyle's had a pretty good series. He's made some really nice passes. Pouncey with the puck behind his net. He'll throw it to the near side for Cole Tarchi. Joey with a cross-ice pass to Thomas. And Thomas nudges ahead to Jamison, who skates towards the left side. Simeone picks up the play over at the goal line on the far side. Now Jamison collides with Jonette as 
The Lions throw it out to center ice, two on two. As Trois Rivier over to Breton, slot shot and glanced off the stick of Aaron Thoe in his Grizzlies debut and goes out of play. And if you just joined us, Aaron Thoe, 6'2 and 200 pounds. He was originally going to wear number 25, but he preferred to go with number 28. Though earlier this season played with Savannah and Norfolk, he was acquired yesterday in a trade with Norfolk for future considerations. And for his size, though, it does look like he's a pretty quick player. Uh, also a guy who can bang around to be physical at times. He looks like he's going to be a good addition for the Grizzlies on their blue line, especially with the injuries the Grizzlies have had, as well as Nate Clerman up in the AHL right now. As the draw won by the Lions, they're in the offensive zone as Beauregard will throw it to Mormit Momini. Back to Beauregard in the near corner, trying to throw it up top for Brodor. It stayed in the corner. Asekos will roll it along the near side. Lions get it back towards Beauregard. He'll bounce it off of a stake on, skate onto the right side. Shot blocked by Raby. Grizzlies clear it out. And icing is waved off. Uh, kind of an interesting call there as it looked like Twelve Riviera had gotten to the line first. And the Lions back in their own zone will start the attack from right to left as they'll bounce it off the near wall. Goes to Kyle Pouncey, who gloves it, drops it. A oh, big time hit at center ice as Kyle Pouncey delivered a hit on Colin Billick. As Raby over towards Secos, he crosses center ice. Over to right, right point shot. Kick saved by Verbetic in the butterfly position. Bartley from the left wing fires towards the net. Verbetic makes a routine save, ankle high, and holds on with 15 33 left in the second. Boy, a big time hit that neutralized in the Grizzlies' territory as Kyle Pouncey lit up Colin Billick. That got the fans excited, and I'm pretty sure they'll show that on the replay. You're at Maverick Center. You bet they do as Pouncey dropped it, and then he nudged it back, and then Pouncey collided with Billick. <laughs> the fans like that one. As the draw, one by Utah. Cam Strong skates in, shot saved by Verbetic. Rebound goes out to Penner on the left side, back to Strong behind the net. Strong still looking for his first goal this season over to Bartley. Left point shot. That gets deflected and goes out of play with 15-21 left in the second. Talking about biggest hit of the weekend, Kyle Pouncey there on Colin Billick might be it. Draws game in the left circle. Penner will take it. He scored a goal last night. Tyler Penner played in all 72 regular season games and all 18 playoff games last year. He's played in all 15 for the Grizzlies. Make the 16 today. Off the drop, Pouncey with a shot that gets blocked by Verbetic. And the puck flips high into the air. I think it hit the video board. I think we've got a first. The puck flipped high into the air from the Lions zone. And for the first time, a puck hit the video board at center ice. So the draw is going to come back to the Lions zone. I'd placed a side bet on who was going to be the first to hit the video board. I thought it was going to be a Grizzly, but it looked like it was a Lion that hit the video board uh, for the first time. We're still waiting for a Grizzly to hit the video board for the first time, partly because I got dinner on the line on it. Sekos will take the draw with Raby to his right and right to his left. Utah wins the draw. Bartley over to right. Now to Sekos. One-timer goes wide. Utah leads 2-0 as the Lions back in their own zone with the puck as they collide along the near wall. Pouncey trying to keep it in, but uh, Larivier will poke it out to center ice, and the puck deflects off a stick and goes out of play. He got redirected, and that's good because I think the Grizzlies were in their own zone and had it deflect off a stick and goes towards Grisby. Grisby hanging out in the front row in section 113. It looks like a kid over in section 113 next to Grisby was able to come away with a game puck. Draws going to be the near side. Brett Stapley will take it for the Lions and Keaton Jamison for the Grizzlies. 14.58 left in the second period. Utah leads 2-0. The draw won by the Lions along the near wall. They step over the offensive line and immediately lose it. Fitz in the right wing, crosses center ice and, and dumps it in. Jamison skates towards the corner. He collides with the glass. J.D. Jamison gets his stick held up. He gets hit again as Robinson towards the right point. will feed it over to the left corner. Lions chase after it. Breton will feed it across. It goes past Connor Welsh as it glides along the near wall. Riley McKay gets it. He flies along the left wing. Now he'll step over the offensive line and skate towards his right. Breton gets it. Big time collision on the right point. Corey Thomas went down. This goes back to Welsh in the left, the left point. He'll take a shot. I got redirected by a stick of gay. And the Lions from the right corner. Hit the side of the net as they tried to center it out in front. Fitz back in his own corner. will throw it across. As Bryce Martin will throw it to Robinson, who drops it off for Jamison. He'll feed it to the Lions' blue line. Robinson and Martin come off as the Lions will feed a pass towards the near side for Momini. It bounces off of him and goes back to Fitz. He's in the offensive zone, trying to get to Strong. 
puck back to Fitz, and he fires a shot that goes wide. Brodeur, pass, picked off by Penner. He takes a shot on it, gets blocked. Penner gets hit in the back by Steepley, no call. Trois Riviere will cross center ice on the far side, dump it in. Grizzly skating from left to right here in the second period. Nielsen back in his own zone, the corner. He loses his stick. He wants a call. None to be had as he goes out towards center ice. Brodeur battling with Strong along the near wall. Puck ends up with Walker. He's on the right side. He'll take a shot. Glove saved by Verbetic. He holds on. Shot probably would have gone wide and hit the side of the net had Verbetic not caught it. But he makes the save with 13.30 left in the second period. Timeout on the ice will be back in one minute. Grizzlies still lead 2-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Thirteen thirty left in the second period. My brother attended the game and they had the lucky row of the game presented by Hook and Rail. He missed it by one row. He was in section 114, row 19. The lucky row was section 114, row 18. <laughs> Should have got my brother a ticket for one row lower, and he would have been part of the lucky row of the game. We're having some fun on a Sunday afternoon as the Grizzlies lead the trois Riviere Lions 2-0. 13.30 is left in the second period. Draw's going to be in the right circle. Penner will take the face off. He's got Walker to his right and Strong to his left. Aaron Thoe in his Grizzlies debut, and Andrew Nilsson are the two defensemen as the Lions win the face off, and Brodora will throw it out to center ice. Larry Vieira's got three goals in this series. We'll dump it in. Nielsen behind his net gets hit pretty hard by John Parker Jones. Puck rolls along the near side. It's still in the Grizzlies zone. Puck rolls back to Walker in the corner. Walker collides with Jones and falls down. Though delivers a hit. Walker gets it back. Walker gets hit by Larry Vieira. Grizzlies with an outlet pass. Three on two. Penner on the right side skates towards the corner as he gets around the net. Penner now in the left corner feeds it up top to Nielsen. He'll take a shot. Oh, he was looking for a redirection, but it got blocked by Jones. Up ahead to Phelan, three on two. Back to Jones. He'll throw it to the right circle. Lefty shot. Saved by Miner, and Trent holds on. Boy, the Lions had a three on two, a legitimate one. They threw it to the right circle, and Trent was able to make the stop. Good job by Trent Miner, who kind of came out a little bit in front of his crease to cut off a shooting angle from the right side. And Trent's done a good job here so far tonight, stopping all 15 he's seen so far. Phelan took the shot, and... The big thing, Phelan wasn't all that far away from Miner. Took a shot, had a lot of velocity on it, and Trent didn't allow a rebound. Draws in the right circle. Jamison will take it for Utah against Brett Stapley. 12.49 left in the second. Utah still leads 2-0. Nobody has scored so far in the second. As McKay over to the right side. Lions won the faceoff. Stapley over on the right side over to Gay. Back towards Stapley. He'll skate in. Shot saved by Miner. And we get a whistle. Penalty is going to be on the Grizzlies. As over to the left side, shot by Bureau Blay goes wide. As a delayed penalty, Malmini skates in right side. Right pokes it away, but didn't get enough to get a whistle. As the Lions will throw it up top for Gallipo. And now a whistle blows. And we'll see. Maybe there's another penalty. Looks like there might be two penalties. Raby has some words for Riley McKay. And it looks like Raby's pretty heated. Raby, the linesman, keeps Raby away from him. Now McKay, oh, McKay hit Raby with his stick. And Raby's, he's steamed right now. That got Raby uh, very upset. Raby's going to the box, and so is McKay. So the first penalty was on the Grizzlies. That was on Raby. And then McKay must have retaliated or something because then he got a penalty. So that power play that the Lions were going to get is not a power play after all. Looks like it's going to be a four-on-four situation for two minutes. 
whatever happened, Raby was very heated at McKay. And Raby had to be separated by the linesman. And then just about as Raby was skating towards the penalty box, McKay took his stick and whacked Raby upside the knee. It wasn't much. It wasn't like it was a, a big time swing. It was just one of those casual swipes and Raby took offense to it. Raby gets two for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct, it appears. McKay gets two minutes for slashing. So it looks like somebody's going to have to go to the box representing Raby. Joey Colatarchi will be the lawyer in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. So Raby got two for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Colatarchi is going to represent Raby in the penalty box. McKay is in there as well, and Raby and McKay continue to exchange words back and forth in the penalty box. So we're going to skate four-on-four for two minutes. The Grizzlies have a four-on-four goal in each of the first two games of this series, four over on the season. Lions win the face-off slot, shot, and Miner makes a save. That was taken by Beauregard as the puck ends up towards the near side. Grizzlies. Zach Sekos, he'll cross center ice. Down the middle, now he'll veer off to the left. He'll step over the line. Seco's left circle shot, blocked by Gallipo. Taken by the Lions, they'll feed it across to John Parker Jones. Jones will nudge it ahead. Lions cross center ice. Beauregard will dump it into the left circle. He gets it taken away by Aaron Tho. Seems like he's going to be a keeper. As right over towards Tho on the right side. Tho wearing number 28. As he's battling one-on-one along the boards, Tho keeps his balance, will nudge it ahead to Nilsson. Nilsson back to Seco, so he'll throw it ahead to right in the right side. Cameron steps over the blue line as he'll drop it off to Seco's. Seco's faked the shot, and he'll throw it to Nilsson. Now bounced off his stick and rolls around to the left corner as Wright gets hit by Parker Jones but keeps his feet. Right over to Martin. He skates down the middle, take a shot. Glove saved by Verbetic. And then after the whistle, looked like Cameron Wright hit a line up top. Uh, didn't look like it was intentional. And we'll see if it gets called. Oh, Lyon's going to get a penalty. Cross-checking is going to be the call, and John Parker Jones goes to the box. I had seen a part where he had hit right in the back, and it looks like that turned into a penalty. 8.42 in is the time of penalty. Cross-checking is a call. Raby's in the box right now for Utah. Two for roughing in a 10-minute misconduct. Riley McKay in the box. Two minutes for slashing. And now John Parker Jones, two minutes for roughing. 59 seconds left of a four-on-three situation. And the ice opens up just that much more. Utah leads 2-0. Lions win the faceoff, and they sail it out all the way towards Trent Miner, who cuts it off behind his net. He'll give it to Nilsson. Nilsson with a left wing pass to Martin at center ice. Martin will skate in. He'll throw it past Jamison on to Walker. Johnny over to Nilsson. Back to Martin. Uh, bounced off his stick. He'll skate towards the far side. But getting there first is Gallipo dumps it in or dumps it all the way across. Actually, that's Francis, Francis Tebow who was able to clear it all the way out. Nilsson drops it off for right. Cameron over with a left wing pass to Nilsson. Andrew will spin it around the boards. Verbetic has it bounce off his stick and Br- Matthew Brodor gets it. He gets it taken away in the Far corner by right. He'll feed it up top for Nilsson. Over to Bartley. One-timer. Saved by Verbetic. Puck still in plays. It rolls along the far boards. The four-on-three situation is about over. Cole Tarchi waiting to come out of the box for Utah and Riley McKay for Trois Riviere. And off the draw, McKay and Cole Tarchi exchange words. McKay yelling at Cole Tarchi. We got a fight! Cole Tarchi and Riley McKay! As both guys, McKay glides towards the Grizzly zone. Cole Tarchi skating towards him. As McKay, both guys hold each other up now. McKay pushes Cole Tarchi. Joey gets in two lefts. Three, four, five left. And Riley McKay goes down. It was almost like McKay couldn't fight Raby. So whoever was representing him in the box, McKay was going to go after him and challenge him to a fight. Cole Tarchi wins the fight as he skates towards the locker room. McKay is going to skate to the locker room. Cole Tarchi to the penalty box. McKay to the locker room. Five each for fighting. As Joey Cole Tarchi, McKay, uh, the action started at center ice. Then McKay backpedaled all the way into the Grizzlies zone. Both guys grabbed each other by the jersey. McKay tried to drag Cole Tarchi to the ice. Then Cole Tarchi, two, three, four lefts. And then Cole dragged down McKay. 
And you knew that Riley McKay wanted to fight Raby, but he couldn't because Raby was still in the box. So he fought Cole Tarchi instead, and Joey more than held his own there. 10-13 left in the second period. 55 seconds left on a Grizzlies power play. As John Parker Jones is still in the box, it's a five-on-four power play. Utah leads 2-0. We're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. As Utah wins the draw, Nilsson in the left point gets it. And he'll throw it over to Strong. Back to Nilsson in the left point. Over to right, back to Strong. One timer, he scores! Cam Strong gets his first of the year, and the Grizzlies have taken a 3 nothing lead. Boy, a double pump goal celebration by Cam Strong. You knew that was a long time coming. He's a good player who's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start statistically. Right, the Strong's going to get the goal. Nielsen and Wright should get the assist. That should be Cameron Wright's third assist of the game. That was a great A goal celebration by Cam Strong after firing a one-timer in the slot. As they show the replay on the video board, Wright to Strong. Strong with a one-timer, and that got past Joe Verbedek. And a two-pump goal celebration with the left arm as Nielsen's going to get another a power play assist. Right, and Nielsen with the assist on Strong's first of the year. As the draw back in the line zone after 12, Riviera won the faceoff. They cross center eye. Stapley will get it ahead to Nicholas Gay. Back to Stapley. It rolls past him on to Miner, who covers up in the crease with 9.48 left in the second period. So if he joined us late, Grizzlies scored two goals in the first. Dakota Raby, 10.58 in. And Victor Bartley scoring 18.52 in. And then the Grizzlies just now on the power play. Cam Strong getting his first of the season. Nielsen and Wright with the assist. That's Wright's third assist of the game. For Andrew Nielsen, that's his 12th power play assist of the season, which leads the league in his 13th power play point. Action in the Grizzlies zone. Trois Riviere wins the faceoff. Utah leads 3-0. As the Lions throw it over to the right point. Lefty shot, glove saved by Miner. Casual stop on the shot taken by Connor Welsh. Draw is going to stay in the Grizzlies zone. 9.34 left in the second period. We also saw a fight in what was an, what was really been an action-packed second period. Joey Colatarchi and Riley McKay dropped the gloves. Cola got the better of McKay. McKay looked like was really steamed at Dakota Raby, but he couldn't, couldn't uh, fight Raby because Raby got a 10-minute misconduct, and he stayed in the penalty box. Cole Tarchi represented him in the penalty box. They both skated out, and McKay was yelling at Cole Tarchi at center ice, and really Cole had no choice but to drop the gloves and take care of business. As the Grizzlies win the faceoff, over to Neil Robinson, neutral ice near the Lions bench. He'll cross center ice, and he'll skate down the middle. Robinson skates over to the left circle, take a shot, and goes wide. Aaron Tho, number 28 in his Grizzlies debut. Last year it was Luca Burzan that wore number 28. Though on the left side, skates towards a point, and he'll wrap it around the boards. Robinson gets it. Neil over in the left corner, throws it to Fitz. Fitz battling with Breton as Fitz gets his stick held up by Breton. Fitz trying to throw it out to the right point, and Fitz delivers a big-time hit. Though, skates towards his left. He winds, fakes a shot, and he'll throw it towards Bartley. Victor wearing an A on his sweater tonight. Throws it to Fitz. Right wing shot, saved by Verbedek. Rebound, Grizzly score! Tyler Penner's made it a 4 0 game as he was out in front as he's now scored in back to back games. Puck trickled out in front of Verbedek, and Penner is able to put it away. And I see Philip DeRosier putting his helmet on, and it looks like we're going to have a goaltender change here at Maverick Center as the Grizzlies have scored four goals on 23 shots. Joe Verbedek is going to be removed. He's had a good season, but it's not his day. Philip DeRossier, who got the loss last night, is going to be in net replacing Verbedek. In seven games this season, he's got a record of 0-4-1 with a 4.62 goals against an average and 8.36 save percentage. Verbedek will take a seat on the bench. DeRossier will stretch out in his crease. Tyler Penner gets his third goal of the season. He's now got a goal in back-to-back games. The assists go to... Neil Robinson and Dylan Fitz. That's Fitz's third assist of the season and Robinson's second. Grizzlies at center ice with the puck as Simeone will dump it in. Simeone in the corner gets around gets around Blay. As he gets hit, Bureau Blay. It's Simeone in the corner and he comes out of it with the puck. Utah leads 4-0. 
as Trois Rivière made a goaltender change after Utah's fourth goal scored by Penner 11 12 in. Phelan left circle takes a shot and it flies off the stick of Bryson Martin and goes out of play off the protective netting with 8 19 left in the second. Draw in the left circle of the Grizzly zone. Trent Miners had a good night, day in net and for the rubber match. You know, Utah looking to win their second in a row as the series is on the line. Trois Rivière won Friday night. Grizzlies won on Saturday, 5-4. to four. And for the Grizzlies, looks like the offense has found its way as they've got 13 goals here so far in this series. Utah wins the draw. They've outscored the Lions 13-10 to 10 in this set in this three-game series. Kind of a baseball style with night games on Friday and Saturday and a day game on Sunday. Puck rolls around to the left corner of the Lions zone as Secos throws to Cam Strong. He got his first of the year on the power play here earlier in the second period. Strong tried to drop it off for Bartley. It's taken away by the Lions. Trois Rivière skates from one blue line to the other. And now at neutral ice, Grizzlies hold the blue line. There's action near the Lions bench. Nicholas Gable will feed it across to Larivier. He'll skate in and he'll veer off to the right. Larivier in the corner gets hit by Bart Bartley. He'll keep his feet. He'll nudge it back towards the right point. Cam Strong will overpower it out to center ice. Lions run it down. They're skating from right to left here in the second period. Pass ahead to Colin Billick. As he'll drop it back off for Brodeur. He's got an impressive resume. He'll cross center ice, roll it around the boards. Bartley over the corner gets double teamed, and Momini took it away. He'll throw it to the right circle. Puck rolls back towards Momini, but he was skating the other way. Grizzlies lifted over the head of Gallipo, and it goes into the Lions zone. John Parker Jones, make that Brodeur, runs after it. Both guys are about 6'6", maybe 6'7". Over to Momeni, he'll skate in, left circle, take a shot, uh, glove save off of Miners. And it went off Miners' glove and goes towards the right corner. Billick looks to start to Beauregard, and the Grizzlies got a stick in the way as the puck squirts towards the far wall. Utah throws it out to center ice. Jamison in the area near the penalty box area, and he'll throw it to Martin. Bryson will bounce it off a of lion. Colin Billick will dump it in. Bryson Martin will take it. Behind the Grizzlies net, they'll feed it to the near side for Cameron Wright. He'll throw it towards the Grizzlies bench, taken by Corey Thomas. Thomas looks to center it out in front, but it's picked off by the Lions as Fitz was skating over there from the right side. Now Phelan, centering pass. Lions couldn't connect on it. And good job by Andrew Nelson poking it to the far corner. Dylan Fitz crosses center ice. And he'll regather it. Now he gets it poked away by James Phelan. And number 14 for the Lions crosses center ice. He fakes stumping it in. He'll carry it in himself to the left side as he'll skate towards a corner. Phelan hits, gets hit by Thomas. Puck rolls back towards the right side. Now it's the right side up top for John Parker Jones. He winds and fires, and the righty shot goes wide. Puck towards the left point. Puck exited the zone. Good job by Dylan Fitz as Breton tried to carry it back in, but the linesman was in the right place at the right time. I think that's Tyler Keston, the linesman that made the call. I think it's his first season as a professional linesman. He did a good job making that call on the offside. 5.58 left in the second period. Grizzlies lead 4-0. Tyler Penner and Cam Strong with the second period tallies. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. I've had a lot of fun here at Maverick Center this afternoon as Utah leads 4-0. Off the draw at neutral ice, a lion helmet goes flying. And Johnny Walker is going to get a penalty. Right off the faceoff, Brett Stapley's helmet went flying, and Johnny Walker is going to get a penalty. So I'm pretty sure that based on the evidence, Walker was able to get 
Stapley's helmet off. That's going to be a penalty on the Grizzlies. Walker is in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Two minutes for high sticking. Time of penalty, 14.03 in. Cameron Wright, Cameron Wright has three assists tonight. Dakota Raby, one goal and one assist. Victor Bartley with one goal and one assist tonight. As Stapley will leave the ice. Grizzlies lead 4-0. Trent Miner's been solid so far, stopping all 18. We'll go over all the stats during the second intermission. Walker in two minutes for high sticking. Draw one by the Lions. Alex Breton will throw it to Beauregard. Beauregard will throw it to the far goal line. Back to Beauregard. He's got a goal in back-to-back games in this series. Over to Breton. Back to Beauregard. He skates towards the right circle. It takes a shot. Save. Rebound. Shot. On oh, that one goes wide on the second attempt. Puck goes back to Breton in the left side. He'll feed it across to Beauregard. He'll get it to the far goal line as the Lions. Well, many will throw it to Beauregard. Back up top to Breton, and he'll fire it to the left side. Parker Jones, the one-timer, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the far side. Corey Thomas gets hit up high by John Parker Jones, and we got a fight. John Parker Jones, who goes 6-7, is fighting Zach Sekos. As Thomas getting the cobwebs out, and Sekos, who's like 10 inches shorter than Parker Jones, is holding up strong. The linesmen step in. As Corey Thomas got hit up high and kind of a dangerous hit by John Parker Jones. And Zach Sekos, being a good teammate, decided he was going to skate in and fight John Parker Jones. He wasn't concerned about Parker Jones being 6'7 and 230 pounds. Sekos, who was listed at 5'10, 179 pounds. Both guys will go to the penalty box. There's now four Grizzlies in the box. <laughs> it's the penalty box. We got a team meeting going in the penalty box for the Grizzlies right now. John Parker Jones is probably going to get more than just the – it was an initial penalty before the the fight with Sekos. Now Cameron Wright has some words for John Parker Jones, and so does Bryson Martin. And that was a high hit, and the league might take a second look at that one. And you talk about toughness. Sekos didn't – he wasn't concerned about being about 10 inches shorter than the guy that he was going to fight. He felt like he had a teammate to protect. And I got to say, I've been awfully impressed with Zach Sekos in just about every phase of the game. There's 128 left in the Lions power play as Utah leads 4 0. Made Cole Tarchi earlier in the period fight Riley McKay. This is by far the most physical game we have seen in this series. Parker Jones is in the locker room right now. Anthony Beauregard is going to the penalty box. John Parker Jones gets two minutes for elbowing and five for fighting. And with there being less than seven minutes left in the second period, he heads into the locker room. There's four Grizzlies in the box right now. <laughs> Johnny Walker's in there. I think mean, Cole Tarchi's still in there. Sekos and... I'm not sure the fourth Grizzly is, but um, we're about one player short of a, a complete line, even strength in the box right now. Bench is a little bit empty. There's probably as many guys in the penalty box as there is in the bench for the Grizzlies. As I mentioned, this is by far the most physical game we've seen this series. Utah wins the draw, and they're in the offensive zone as we're skating four on four for the next Minute 19, as the Grizzlies skate from left to right, they get to neutralize. Bryson Martin stops near the Lions bench. They'll throw it across towards Aaron Tho. Tho wearing number 28 in his Grizzlies debut. He gets taken away. Stapley defended by Tho. Tho with a good poke check, but Stapley's able to keep the puck. He'll skate towards the right side. He'll feed it to the right circle. Lefty shot. Saved by Miner. That was taken by Olivier Gallipo. Miner makes the save, and a good job by Tyler Penner and Aaron Tho protecting Miner in case the rebound was there to be had. Oh, that's right. Rabies in the penalty box. Cole Tarchi skates off to the locker room. Anthony Beauregard has some words for Johnny Walker. So Raby, Walker, and Sekos are each in the penalty box for the Grizzlies. Raby serving a 10-minute misconduct. We'll go over all the scoring and penalties during the second intermission. Off the draw, puck rolls towards Miner, and Trent covers up. 4.50 is left in the second. 
Draw's going to come once again to the right circle. Utah leads 4 0. Well, skate four on four for another 53 seconds, and then Walker comes out of the box, and the Grizzlies will have a short power play after that. As the draw won by the Lions. Billet goes down looking for a call, but the referee didn't spot it. Puck towards the near side for Martin as Neil Robinson gets hit by Billick. As Jamison towards the near side, Jamison and Billick. Billick goes down as Jamison hit him. Jamison towards the near side will nudge ahead towards Bryce Martin, taken away by Stapley. Stapley skates towards the slot. He'll take a shot, save rebound, goes kick, gets kicked over in the corner. Grizzlies up ahead to Jamison. Left wing, one on two. He'll cross into the zone. Jamison to the goal line, skates around the net. I try to feather it out in front. DeRosier closed the door. Larivier will throw it back towards Breton. 12 seconds left in the four on four. Long range pass gets tipped deep into the Grizzlies zone. Nilsson takes it. He'll fake it to Strong now, throw it to the right side for Cameron Wright. Wright drops it off for Simeone, who skates in. Simeone gains the line, throws it back to Wright. As Walker comes out of the box, Utah has an abbreviated power play. 12 Riviere tried to clear it out, and it hit Tyler Kesson, the linesman, at neutral ice. As puck deep in the Grizzlies zone, Cameron Wright gets blasted. Andrew Nilsson takes offensive Larry Riviere. Cam Strong over there as well. Puck still in play. Now a glove gets dropped. Well, that was a big-time hit behind Trent Miner. That was Nicholas Larivier, and the Grizzlies wanted to fight him, but pucks, the play continued. Now Christian Simeone is pounding away on the right with Nicholas Gay. Christian Simeone throwing a bunch of punches at Nicholas Gay. Gay is dragged down by Simeone. Simeone and Nicholas Gay fight. Grizzlies are almost running out of forwards. That's the fourth forward that's going to be in the penalty box, but with less than five minutes left in the period, Christian Simeone gets the crowd fired up here as he'll skate towards the locker room. Nicholas Gay will go to the locker room as well for taking a bunch of punches from Christian Simeone. As those guys dropped the gloves, looked like everybody wanted to get after Nicholas Larivier, who delivered a big-time hit on Cameron right behind Utah's net. Nielsen wanted to fight Larivier. Larivier just kind of nudged himself to the side, wanted to get after Cameron Wright, and then Simeone and Nicholas Gay ended up colliding. Larivier didn't think he did anything wrong as he tried to do everything he could to avoid getting in a confrontation. And then Christian Simeone just started pounding away with the right. Six or seven rights by Simeone, and then he eventually, eventually drug Nicholas Gay to the ice. Yeah, the Grizzlies are running out of forwards. They got three in the box right now, and they got Simeone in the locker room. So it looks like Simeone and Nicholas Gay get double minus for roughing. They're not even going to call it a fight. My brother is at the game right now. He was, Remember, he was one row away from being the lucky row of the game. He says, I'm going to just start coming to the last game of the series if it's going to be like this. <laughs> it's, it's kind of hockey. I think a lot of fans still like to see, even though obviously it's been phased out a little bit as time has gone by. Yeah, it's double minors for roughing. You, you don't call it a fight, even though Christian Simeone was able to get quite a few roughs in there on Nicholas Gay. 3.39 is left in the second period. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. It's been a very long second period in terms of time on the clock as it's 4.42. That's the time of day up and down the Wasatch front. Three and a half minutes left in the second period. Utah still leads 4-0. Cameron right to the right side, gains the line, gets around a skater, and that was Brodeur. As a puck deep in the Lions zone, now it's taken by Jonette. Lions are back at full strength. They throw it to center ice looking for Beauregard. Nilsson picked it off. Good job by Andrew anticipating the play. Nilsson will throw it to Strong. And Strong who scored a second period goal as he's near the Grizzlies bench and he dumps it in. Matthew Brodeur behind his net as he avoids a check of Dylan Fitz. As the Lions will get it back towards Brodeur, Fitz poked it away. And now it goes into the corner. Cameron Wright battling. Wright collides. Billick goes down as well. Billick will sell it high into the air. So, so much stuff has happened here in the second period. We had, for the first time all season, a puck hit the video board at center ice. It was a line that did it. As the puck is at neutral ice, Aaron Thoe will throw it from blue line to blue line. It rolls deep into the line zone, taken by Tebow. He's, he's being chased down by Cola Tarchi. Cola playing forward for the Grizzlies tonight, normally a defenseman. As Brador throws it to center ice, Lions will get it back towards Gallipo. Make that Tebow, and he'll throw it to the Utah blue line, where it's taken away by Jamison. Keaton to the right side, gains the offensive line, and throws to the right corner. Jamison hits 
Matthew Brodeur, Cole Tarchi behind the net, battling with another line as well. As there's a little bit more than two minutes left in the second period. Man stopped their feet here in a very eventful second frame as the draw goes back towards the Lions as they won the battle along the wall. They cross center ice. Momini dumps it in as Miner will give way to a Grizzly as Utah will throw it out to center ice. Now the Lions feed it across to Connor Welsh. Left wing, they cross center ice and dump it in. Puck rolls along the far wing boards. Penner battling. It squirts towards, towards Tho. Now Lervier will throw it to the right point. Now across to Welsh. He takes a lefty shot. Saved by Miner. Billick was out in front trying to redirect it, but it was a line shot towards Miner who made the save, and he holds on. He's stopped all 25 so far. 143 left in the second period. Utah still leads 4 0. Shots have been pretty even tonight. Lions 25 shots to the Grizzlies 24. Draw one by the Lions. Righty shot by Senarami goes wide as Nielsen gets it back over to Corey Thomas. Thomas along the far side. He'll lift the puck high into the air as it bounces into the Lions zone. DeRosier lets it go, and it's going to be an icing on the Grizzlies. Bill DeRosier, if that name sounds familiar. He played for the Idaho Stillheads for about three or four seasons. Uh, DeRosier, who started last night and got the loss. He play, uh, DeRosier played for Idaho 2016, 2017, and 2018. He also spent some time in the AHL with the Texas Stars those years. He even played in six seasons of a fourth th- season in, with Idaho back in 2018, 2019 year. As off the draw, right side shot saved by Miner. That was taken by Alex Breton. A little bit more than one minute left in the second period. As two Grizzlies and two Lions battling behind the net. Nilsson, but it's the Lions that come out of it with the puck. They'll throw it up top for Gallipo. He'll bounce it off the end wall, taken by Senarami. I centers it to Jonette. He takes a backhand shot and it goes wide. Hit off of Penner as Jonette feeds it to the right circle. And Larivier couldn't get a shot off. Grizzlies lift it high into the air, bouncing puck towards the Lions zone. Lions will nudge it forward for Beauregard. He'll get it to Jonette, who enters from the right side. At the point, he'll bounce it off the end wall as it hits the Mavericks sign. As Beauregard will throw it to the corner, he collides with Penner. And the Lions come up with it as they'll drop it off on the right side with 42 seconds left in the period. Breton right side takes a shot and it goes wide. As he tried to go stick side on Miner. Larivier throws to Beauregard. He feeds it towards the near wall for Momini. He'll kick it out uh, back up top, but it exits the zone. Gallipo will feed it across towards Breton. He'll throw it to the left side looking for Larivier. Pouncey takes it away. He'll throw it to Penner. Penner, high slot, takes a shot. Uh, glanced off the stick of Connor Welch, make that Breton as the Lions cross center ice and lose the puck. Martin will feed it to the left side for Fitz. Dylan will skeet to the left circle. They get a left righty shot that goes wide. Five seconds left in the period. Larivier gets poked away by right. Strong over to Fitz. Con- Dylan skates in, but time runs out on the Grizzlies and the second period as we played 40 minutes here at Maverick Center. And Utah scored two in the first, scored two more in the second. It's probably the most physical period of hockey we've seen here at Maverick Center all season. Quite a few confrontations. We had a couple fights. Looked like the period was going to end, but they put one-tenth of a second on the clock for the second period. The horn was not working. Uh, the horn, which kind of has a weird sound this year, uh, wasn't working. But it uh, looks like they'll drop the puck at neutral ice. And... Phelan and Wright will take the draw. There's one-tenth of a second left in the period. Phelan wins the faceoff. I wonder if that's going to count on the record. Cam Strong and Colin Billick exchange some words near the Grizzlies bench. The second period officially is over. Grizzlies lead 4-0. We'll go over all the snaps from this second period and try to see if we can remember all the memorable things that happened in this period. There was a lot. That happened in the second frame. It's the Grizzlies four and the Lions nothing. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey presented by Rio Tinto. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. You know, there wasn't a single penalty minute in the first period. Grizzlies had 28 minutes worth of penalties in the second period. Trois Revere had 22. I'm Tyson Whiting. We'll talk with Kiki Crum here later on in the intermission as Utah leads 4-0. And if you joined us late, Dakota Raby scored 10-58 into the first period with Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos getting the assist. And then Victor Bartley scored 108, or with 108 left in the first, 18-52. And Cameron Wright and Dakota Raby with the assist. Cam Strong made it a 3-0 game. It's the only power play goal so far on either side. Utah is one for three on the power play. <laughs> Believe it or not, all those penalty mitts, and yet Grizzlies have only had three power plays. Paul Revere has only had one. Uh, obviously, a lot of matching penalties on both sides. Uh, and Cam Strong is a good hockey player. He's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start in terms of the stat sheet. And he got a one-timer. He was in the slot. And Cameron Wright was over to the left side. It was one of those plays. Strong threw it to Nilsson on the left point. Nilsson threw it to Wright in the left circle. Wright to Strong. And Strong with a one-timer. He scored, and then he did an epic two-pump goal celebration on one knee. And you knew that had, that had to feel good for him to finally get off the schneid and get his first goal of the season. Strong has played in every game so far this year as it's the Grizzlies' 16th game of the season. Strong's played in the mall. And he's looked good here this weekend. His goal on the power play, 9.56 in, uh, made it a 3 nothing game. Tyler Penner extended the Grizzlies' lead. A 5-on-5 five five goal, 11-12 into the second. Dylan Fitz and Victor Bartley with the assist. And that was another one that was just, you know, a puck just out in front of the net. You know, cut, you know, a little bit of a rebound. One of those were, you know, the Grizzlies, if you think about what's different this week than last week against Idaho, Grizzlies are just getting out in front of the net, and when the puck is just laying there, you know, the Grizzlies have found a way to capitalize this weekend. Three of the four goals have been out in front. You know, Rabies was near the crease as the Lions just tried to, you know, clear the puck out, and it bounced off a of Rabies and went in into the back of the net. And Victor Bartley, you know, his goal, which was the second one in the first period, um, looked, you know, Joe Verbetic, you know, looked like he had a tough time trying to track, you know, locate where the puck was. He thought that maybe he had covered it up, and then Victor Bartley just kind of nudged it in, uh, and that was late in the first period. Then Tyler Penner's goal was, you know, kind of a similar situation out in front, and then Cam Strong's was a one-timer on a power play. So Grizzlies really have gotten some opportunities. You know, they had seven scoring chances in the second period, nine so far in the game. Uh, Twelve Revere's also had nine scoring chances. Really the difference tonight, the Grizzlies have been able to capitalize on their chances, and Trois Rivera just hasn't been able to do so. And a lot of that just comes from the Grizzlies being in the right place at the right time. And that's really a key part as to why the Grizzlies have 13 goals so far this weekend against the Lions. Now, this is probably as physical a period as we've seen at home all season. Like I said, there wasn't a single penalty uh, in the first period. Philip Bureau Blay got a tripping minor 31 seconds in. Riley McKay and Dakota Raby each got penalties, 741 in. McKay got a slashing minor. Raby got a rough. The penalty right by Raby came first. And then, you know, while it was a delayed penalty, Lions are working the puck around. McKay slashed Raby. And Raby, he was esteemed as I've ever seen him. He wanted to get after McKay. And then, you know, the linesman was, you know, 
frantically trying to make sure that Raby didn't get after McKay. McKay kind of took a stick and just casually tapped it to Raby, and then Raby really got upset there. And both guys were in the penalty box. Both guys were exchanging big-time wor words at each other. Uh, both guys each got two minutes, but then Raby got a 10-minute misconduct. Uh, Joey Kolatarchi came in and represented Raby in the box. And, you know, once Raby's two minutes was up, then Kolatarchi would come out of the box. Well, Kolatarchi and McKay, you know, Kolatarchi seemed like he was about ready to mind his own business. McKay at center ice starts yelling at Kolatarchi. And before you knew it, both guys at center ice dropped the gloves. McKay kind of started backpedaling towards the grizzly zone. He got all the way to where he was about 10 feet from minor. Cool. Tarchi is kind of at about the same speed, just kind of glided towards, <laughs> glided about where McKay was. And then both guys grabbed each other by the jersey. Cool. Tarchi was able to get in about four or five lefts. I don't think McKay, McKay was able to get a punch in. And then Cool. Tarchi dragged McKay to the ice. The time of that fight was 9.47 into the second period. And then Johnny Walker got a high-sticking minor, 14.03 in. John Parker Jones got an elbowing minor, 14.35 in, as he hit Corey Thomas. Now, Thomas was able to stay in the game, as we saw him later on in the second period. But then that, um, that brought Zach Sekos. 5'10", 175 pounds, challenging 6'7", 230-pound John Parker Jones to a fight. like we now have some water here high top section 114 <laughs> and you got to give Zach Seco's credit I mean it seems like the more we've seen him the more we've liked and it's been every aspect of the game where he's really excelled in as Seco's you know even though tonight you know he doesn't he only has one assist he's a plus two and he's really contributed winning a lot of face-offs and doing a lot of key things for the Grizzlies here this afternoon and Seco's got in a fight with John Parker Jones he's about 10 inches taller than him that came 14.35 in, and then uh, with about three and a half minutes left in the second period, Cameron Wright got blasted behind the Grizzlies' net, and it was Nicholas Larivier who delivered the hit, the old number 55 for the Lions. And the Grizzlies wanted to go after him. Uh, Larivier just did whatever he could, just kind of making sure that he wanted no part of a confrontation. Christian Simeone got in there, and he went after Nicholas Gay. And, you know, those guys... Looked like they both dropped the gloves, but each got a double minor for roughing. Simeone was able to get in like six or seven big time punches on 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 Nicholas Gay, and that was that was it. And that's really all the penalties. But you know, play's been pretty physical here throughout the second period. Utah leads four nothing. As Trent Miners had a good game so far, he's twenty five for twenty five on saves. Now, after Penner scored the goal eleven twelve into the second period, Joe Verbetic was pulled. He stopped nineteen of twenty three. And Philip DeRossier played the final 8.48 of the second period, stopping the only shot that he saw. So the Grizzlies lead 4 nothing. Other action in the league. Second intermission, Tulsa leads Wichita 5-2. to two. Looks like Dylan Sadaway has scored a goal for Tulsa. Tyler Penner, uh, Bean has also scored. Ryan Lindgren has also found the back of the net for the Oilers. They lead Wichita 5-2 that game after two periods. Wheeling defeats Toledo 4-1. In overtime, Iowa over Cincinnati 4-3. And Indy gets a 3-2 victory over Kalamazoo. We'll go over some NFL scores here shortly. As it, it's, it's the rule. Uh, you know, if you're going to be sitting here next to us, we're going to have to put you on the air. And Kiki Krems joined us. And Kiki, after no penalties in the first period, I wasn't expecting to see all the physical play that we saw in the second. Certainly fun to see. Yeah. I was thinking, wow, the first period isn't as chippy as I thought the last game of a three game series would be. And then the second period happened. <laughs> For the first time in the home game, the puck hit the video board at center ice. It was a Lions player that did it. See, I think Andrew Nelson's going to be the first Grizzly that hits the video board, and uh, I got a side bet with Guy and Tim Broussard about it. And so I still, you know, I'm still up to win that thing. I think Nelson's going to hit the video board first. But, well, I uh, want to be on that bet. Who, who's going to be? Well, you're in Bora Bora. You know, you're enjoying oh, the beautiful country uh, when we made say... that side bet. I'm going to say Cam Wright. You think Cam Wright's going to hit that video board one. first? Yeah, I do. I, I think that's possible. Well, I'm going with the defenseman because I think it's going to be a defenseman trying to clear the zone and just lift it way into the air. Yeah, maybe. That's where I think I've got the edge over Broussard and Gallo. I think Who did also they one of the say? forwards. 
I don't remember, but I remember there were forwards, and because of that, I knew that I had the advantage. So I didn't even, I didn't even pay attention to who they went with because I just assumed I was going to win. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Tough break for my brother, who was one row away from the lucky row of the game. He decided to sit in section 19, or in row 19 of section 114. The lucky row of the game was section was uh, row 18. Tough luck for him. He could have won some free hook and rail. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen here in the final 20 minutes of play? Is Grizzlies lead four nothing? You think we're going to see more physical stuff, or do you think uh, both teams, you know, in the third game in less than 48 hours, are just going to kind of skate out the last 20 minutes? I think it's going to be more like the second period. I think the first period, like I said, they played more control. But I feel like um, maybe they realized a sense of urgency or something, and they're going to pick up their game, and hopefully it can be um, as exciting as the second. Yeah, it was an exciting second period. There was a lot that happened, and um, and just hoping the third period goes by pretty well. As the Grizzlies, it's about as good as I've seen them play all season. You know, offensively, they seem to be on all cylinders, and, Really, the difference is the Grizzlies just being able to get pucks in front and being, you know, just being able to get in, get in those really good scoring opportunities and those good scoring places. I think that's a big part of the why the Grizzlies have had success. What have you seen from the Grizzlies here today that, you know, has really brought a lot of success on the offensive side of things? I think being a little more aggressive too. I feel like um, with like Ravy and Seckos, I've never seen them be that aggressive, and I feel like it's helped them in the long run. And then defensively, you know, Trent Miner's been on point. I think it's the best game he's played all mm-hmm. season. I agree. And I've really, really been really impressed with the new guy, Aaron Tho. You know, for a guy that's 6'2", he's been physical and he moves yeah. around pretty well. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited to see how he does this season. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll talk during the postgame show. Thanks, Tyson. That's Kiki. When we come back in one minute, we'll give you some scores from around the world of sports. Once again, the score after two periods, it's a Grizzlies four and the Lions nothing. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey. It's the Sickford and Jensen Intermission Report on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First, and see where life takes you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. Utah leads 4-0. You think about Dakota Raby, you think about a Gordie Howe hat trick, he's one fight away, or is it maybe a little bit more rare that he gets a Gordie Howe than a Gordie Howe hat trick? What he has done so far, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes as we lead into the third period. Utah leads Four nothing as Dakota Raby has a goal, an assist, and a game misconduct. Is that more rare than a Gordie Howe hat trick? Action from around the world of sports. Late fourth quarter, the Seahawks lead the Raiders 34-27. As Seattle nursing a seven-point lead. Raiders are three and seven on the year. Seattle six and four. Late fourth quarter. How about that? The Chargers are in another close game. Did the Chargers ever play a blowout? It seems like every game goes down to the final, uh, the final horn. As Arizona leads the L.A. Chargers 24-17, that game with a minute 48 left in the fourth quarter. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Chiefs lead the Rams 23-10. Nine minutes to go in regulation. Niners lead the Saints 13-0. Finals in week 12 of the NFL. Panthers lead the Broncos. Or Panthers defeat the Broncos 23-10. In, over, in overtime, Nick Chubb scored a touchdown as the Browns defeat the Buccaneers 23-17. Jaguars over the Ravens, 28-27. Dolphins, 30. Texans, 15. Jets defeat the Bears, 31-10. Bengals over the Titans, 20-16. Commanders defeat the Falcons, 19-13. And later on tonight, Packers are at the Eagles. Eagles, 9-1 this season. Packers are 4-7. Philadelphia is a 6.5-point favorite. So here's kind of the discussion with Dakota Raby. He's got one goal, one assist. He's got a game misconduct. 
And if you think about it, if he would have come out of the box the same time that Riley McKay did, I'm pretty sure it would have been Raby that would have gotten in the fight instead of Cole Tarchi. But Raby was still in the box as he was serving a 10-minute misconduct. So Raby could still get in the fight and officially get a Gordie Howe hat trick. But a goal, and assist, and a game misconduct might be a little bit more rare than a Gordie Howe hat trick. I mean, after all, how many times have you seen a goal, an assist, and a misconduct? Not a game misconduct, but just one of those 10-minute ones. As Raby was in the penalty box, we had four Grizzlies forwards in the penalty box at one time. And then Christian Simeone would have gone to the penalty box, but there was less time than there was, you know, than there was for the penalty he was serving. So he went to the locker room. Grizzlies were running out of forwards there as the officials come out. And they got booed this time. I tell you, they should have just done what they did in the first intermission and come out about the same time that the home team comes out. That way they're not going to get booed because what are the fans going to do? Boo the home team as the Grizzlies are set to hit the ice here shortly. Philip DeRossi will be in net for the third period. He replaced Joe Verbedek after Utah scored their fourth goal of the game. Tyler Penner's got to go in back-to-back games. He's been outstanding. When you think about you know, players who are going to get star honors tonight, you know, Trent Miner's played a good game so far. Victor Bartley, for the second straight game, has a multiple-point effort. He's got one goal and one assist. Raby, for the third straight game, has two or more points, one goal and one assist, and a, game, and a, and a misconduct. So goal and assist and a, and a misconduct, that's got to be more rare than a Gordie Howe hat trick. That could end up deciding him being the number one star tonight. Zach Sekos is a goal away from a Gordie Howe hat trick. He got in a fight in the second period. He also scored an assist in the first, so... Hey, Sekos maybe could get his first career Gordie Howe hat trick. If I remember right, that's his first career fight that he got in with John Parker Jones late in the second period. It's also been a great night for Cameron Wright, who's my pick to click. He's got three assists on the afternoon. In fact, Cameron Wright, you think about the stretch that he has been on. He's a guy that scored a lot of goals in college, and I think the goals will come with time. But Wright, in his last... 10 games, you know, has really picked it up offensively. He plays a physical brand of hockey, and he's not afraid to get his nose out there in front of the net and really uh, cause a lot of action. Uh, Wright, over his last 10 games, coming into play tonight, two goals and eight assists. So he's got two goals and 11 assists in his last 10-plus games. About a point a game uh, since the start of the Idaho series in late October. Two Lions are in the box right now, and one Grizzly in the penalty box. We'll skate five on five here to start the third period. There's not a single penalty minute in the first period. Grizzlies 28 penalty minutes in the second, 12 every year with 22. Penner will take the draw for Utah. As we mentioned before, he's scored a goal in back-to-back games. Cam Strong to his left and Johnny Walker to his right. Defensive pairing of Kyle Pouncey and Victor Bartley. They'll put 20 minutes on the stadium scoreboard clock here at Maverick Center on the ribbon boards, the new ribbon boards. They're a lot brighter than last season's version. Draw one by the lines. They'll skate from left to right here in the third period and run away with the final stanza of the homestand. Grizzlies get it. Walker high slot shot saved by DeRossier. Puck goes to the right corner, and they tried to lift it out of the zone. Cam Strong kept it in. Now the puck towards the Lions bench. It's at neutralized. Walker tried to nudge it to Penner, but the puck didn't have enough steam to get there. Lions will skate in. Beauregard throws it towards the corner for Momini, but it deflects back to neutralize. Cam Strong gets hit near the Grizzlies bench. Walker gets it and dumps it in as the Grizzlies make a full line change. 35 seconds into the third period. Raby is back in there after serving his misconduct. As Lions skate two on two, they enter the zone. Colin Billick will skate towards the corner. As he gets pushed by Aaron Tho, T-H-O-W. Over to the left point. They get it across to Centerami. His help bounced it off the boards. Right in the left corner, nudges ahead towards Tho. Tho avoids a check, and he'll feed it out to the right side, looking for Penner. No icing on the play as Penner will come off as center Rami along the near side over towards Philip Bureau Bureau Blay, wearing number 65, and he'll throw it ahead towards center Rami. Now to Stapley. He crosses center ice down the middle. Stapley will skate in. He's surrounded by five Grizzlies, and Thomas poked it away towards Martin. Sekos has a poke over towards the near boards. He'll chase after it as Corey Thomas delivers a hit. Sekos will nudge it ahead to neutralize. Bouncing puck goes past Centerami, deep into the line zone. Taken by Francis Tebow, number 28. He'll skate towards the right side. Grizzlies tap it back towards the left corner of the line zone. 
as the Lions will nudge it ahead. Corey Thomas nearby. As the puck gets past Thomas, Lions will cross center ice. As Trois Rivière skates towards the left circle, shot gets deflected. Phelan is looking for an attempt in the slot. Robinson cut in front of him. Now Fitz will cross center ice, and he'll dump it in as he was nearby Jonathan Jonette. DeRossier behind his net will hand it off to Matthew Brodeur. He'll throw it out to Grizzlies territory. It bounces off the stick of Phelan, flies into the air, and bounces at Miner's feet, and Trent's able to cover up. 17.57 left in the third period. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Simeone is going to come out of the penalty box, and so is Nicholas Gay. Both guys were serving double minor penalties for roughing. And Simeone will skate towards his bench, and so will Nicholas Gay. Now the penalty box is empty as John Parker Jones is in the box as well, and he comes out. So after all that action and all that activity in the penalty box, nobody's in the box right now. We're skating five on five. With 17.57 left in the third period, Utah leads 4-0. Draw one by the Lions. Gallipo with a shot. Glove saved by Miner. Trent holds on. 17.54 now is left in the third. Grizzlies will be on the road next week, next Friday and Saturday against the Idaho Steelheads. 6.50 pregame show, 7.10 faceoff both nights. The following week, the Grizzlies will be in Jacksonville, Florida. Former Grizzly skaters Luke Martin, Hunter Skinner, Travis Howe off the draw. Puck rolls towards Miner again, and he covers up. You know, Travis Howe is a big-time fan favorite for the Grizzlies. He'll be in Jacksonville. He's played in every game, I think, for the Icemen. And former Grizzly goaltender Parker Gahagan, who was with the club two years ago, he's been the starter for Jacksonville this season. So a lot of familiar names on the Jacksonville roster. They'll be The Grizzlies will be in Jacksonville a couple weeks from now. Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday in early December as the draw goes towards Utah and Strong will clear it out to center ice. Beauregard gathers it. The Lions skate from left to right. As Utah leads 4 nothing. Beauregard gets it at center ice and he'll feed a right wing pass to Lervier. He'll throw it towards Momini. Now Lervier keeps it. He'll take a shot that goes wide. Bretton literally kicks it to the corner for Momini. He'll fire it off a stanch and it hits the back of the net as Beauregard back towards the right side as he'll skate towards his left. Beauregard now in the high slot. He'll take a righty shot, and it goes wide. And the puck rolls towards the left corner. It's bouncy gets pushed by Lervier, and Utah comes out with the puck. Dylan Fitz in the right wing, crosses center ice, and he'll dump it in as it bounces off the chartway, sighing on two hops in the left corner. Strong throws it back around. DeRossier cuts it off behind the net as the American or the Lions restart the attack. Parker Jones has deflected off of Simeone stick at center ice, and then the Lions skate in from the right. Jonette along the boards, tries to get around Nilsson. He tries to feed it out in front, and the puck ends up bouncing off of Walker. Goes to Nilsson. He tried to feed it to Walker at center ice, kept in left point. Lines with a shot, and that gets blocked about five feet in front of Miner, and it was Aaron Thoe. He'll throw it towards Walker, who bats it out to center ice. Could have been played by the high stick, but the official said play on. Lions deep in their own zone as Matthew Brodeur has got over a decade of professional hockey experience or a little close to that. Out to Parker Jones, who's a young one at only 22 years old, to dump it to the corner. Phelan spins it around as it rolls along the near side as Connor Welsh has a glance off his stick. Simeone with a big time. Oh, Simeone got hit big time by Colin Billick. And charging looks like it's going to be the call. Simeone got back to his feet. Colin Billick with a big time hit and... That's the penalty on the Lions. It wasn't a hit along the boards. It was Simeone skating along the wall, and then Billick with a big-time hit. Simeone hit the boards, but luckily he was able to get back to his feet. Two minutes for charging. Time of penalty, 3.53 into the third period. Utah leads 4-0. Grizzlies are one for three on the power play so far tonight. Zach Seckos will take the drives a goal away from a Gordie Howe hat trick, and it could be even more impressive as, uh, you know, he's not a guy that drops the gloves more than a couple times a year, I'd imagine. Lines cleared out to center ice. Raby gets it. Remember, Raby is a fight away from a Gordie Howe hat trick as he skates around Miner's net. He'll drop it off for Nilsson. Andrew will skate down the middle in the Grizzly zone. Now he's out to neutralize. He'll drop it back off for Wright, who's got three assists tonight. They'll feed it to the left side for Seckos. Back to Raby, Dakota. Over to Nilsson. Now to the right side for Walker. Oh, Walker was looking for a toe drag, and Gallipo took it away and cleared it out. 
Miner skates towards the far corner to cut it off. He'll give it to Nilsson. This Grizzlies power play continues. Nilsson with a near side pass to Raby. He crosses center ice and he'll throw it to right. As Cameron crosses center ice, he'll feed it to the right side for Raby. Raby across the set goes. I'll centering pass out in front for right and the pass goes wide. Puck to the right point for Nilsson. He'll give it to Raby. He gets it poked away. Cedric Momini will clear it out. Grizzlies will make a line change. So will the Lions. They'll at least get two new skaters on the ice. It would call them fresh, but it's the third game in less than 48 hours. There's not many fresh bodies out there. As Bartley will throw it to the far side to Penner. Across to Martin, who crosses center ice. Martin drops it off for Robinson, but the Grizzlies are offside. As there's 40 seconds, 48 seconds left in the power play. 14.55 left in the third. You know Grizzlies fans got their money's worth with the all the action in the second period. It's the final game of a six-game homestand. Don't forget to go to utahgrizzlies.com. Tomorrow, the Cyber Monday deal begins. That's tickets to three of the biggest home games of the season, three biggest Saturday night promotions, and you could also get the first home playoff game for free. That's at utahgrizzlies.com, the Cyber Monday deal, which will be available starting tomorrow. Grizzlies enter the zone. Martin will feed it to the far side. It's taken away. Jonathan Jonet will fly along the left wing. He'll get to the circle, take a shot, and one goes wide. As Tebow gets hit along the right side by Martin, puck squirts towards the far corner for Penner. As the Lions get some more fresh um, new bodies out in the ice, as Bartley will skate across center ice, and he'll dump it in, as chasing after it's Martin along with Penner. Penner behind the net. The glass goes shaking behind the Lions net. Kind of made a strange sound. Bartley fires a shot, kick saved by DeRosier, and over towards the corner, battling is Penner and Robinson with a couple Lions. Robinson comes out of the pile with the puck. As the power play is over, Billick joins the play. Right side, Martin with a shot that goes wide. As Robinson gets hit over in the corner, as the Lions back at neutral ice, and it gets kicked out of play with 13.57 left in the third period. Guy Carenza kind of goes, the Lions are back at full strength and kind of in slow motion. I really like that. Guy Carenza is usually up with us. He's filling in for Chris Hagen as the PA announcer. Timeout on the ice will take one as well. Grizzlies lead 4-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Mountain Land Supply Company. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First, and see where life takes you. Draws at neutral ice. Utah leads 4-0. Less than 14 minutes left in the third period. Utah wins the faceoff and dumps it deep into the Lions zone. Grizzlies skating from right to left as we see it from high atop. Section 114, Aaron Thoe in his Grizzlies debut. He's looked impressive. He'll throw it to the right side for Simeone around the net. And Thoe gets hit in the right point. That's going to be a penalty as Thomas... In the left point, rolls it around the board. Simeone behind the net as he's battling, and it's touched up by Alex Breton. Aaron Tho was over on the right side. He got hit, hit in the point away from the puck. And that looked like it was John Parker Jones. He goes 6'7 and 230. Looked like Tho wanted to go after Jones after the whistle. But P John Parker Jones gets two minutes for cross checking, 628 into the third. So the Grizzlies are back on the power play. Leading 4 nothing. Draw in the left circle. Seckles will take it. He's a goal away, a goal away from a Gordie Howe hat trick. We'll see if we'll get it here. As right around the net with three assists tonight. We'll throw it up top for Raby, who might be the number one star with one goal, one assist, and the misconduct. As Seckles throws it back to Raby. As Dakota over to Nilsson, back to Ray B. He'll feed it across to right. It's a one-timer, saved by DeRossier. As right looking for his fourth, fourth goal of the season, Colin Billick will carry it out of the zone and into the offensive end, two-on-two. Two. Billick with a righty wrist shot that goes wide. 
or goes high over the crossbar. Would have had the accuracy. Eh, Would have been lower, but Tebow will dump it in to the left corner. Nielsen after it, back on the far side as the Grizzlies will restart the attack. Nielsen ahead to Johnny Walker, glanced off his stick onto DeRossier, who covers up. Walker got pretty. <laughs> Walker gets a little bit close to the goaltenders just about every time, and that kind of agitates the opposition, but Walker just doing his job as he'll skate off the ice. He's got five goals in his last nine games coming into play tonight. Draw taken by Tyler Penner as the Grizzlies make a line change. 12.49 left in the third. Utah leads 4-0. Shots have been pretty close to even. 28 for the Grizzlies and 26 for the Lions. As the draw won by the Lions over in the right corner, they'll get it to Momini, and he'll clear it all the way out. Cedric Momini had two separate seasons with Rapid City where he had exactly 20 goals. As... Bartley will skate down the middle. It seemed like half of those goals were against the Grizzlies those years. Over to Martin in the left corner. As he overskates the puck, fits in the area. Martin continues to battle. It goes towards Robinson, who's got an assist tonight. He'll feed it across to Bartley. Bartley takes a shot. Uh, glanced off of a sticking on to Fitz. It bounced off of him. Lions will skate around their net, stop in the corner. Larivier will feed it across towards Centerami. He'll get it back to Larivier, who backhands it all the way out towards Trent Minor. Miner skates towards the near corner to cut it off. He'll give it over to Bryce Martin, who skates around the Grizzlies' net. 30 seconds left in the Grizzlies' power play as Martin skates down the middle, crosses the center ice, gets to the zone, loses the puck as it rolls towards DeRozier, who clears it out towards the right corner. Bartley in the point, over to Robinson. He'll take a lefty shot. Oh, I got redirected by Fitz and hits off the DeRozier's pads and rolls back towards the right side. Fitz around the boards looking for Robinson, but he couldn't keep it in. And so glides along the near boards. Five seconds left in the power play is Bartley around the net. 11.35 and counting left in the third. Utah still leads 4-0. Bartley crosses the center ice and dumps it in. Derosi around the net. As he'll throw it to the right side. Cole Tarchi centers it, and it bounces off of Derosi and glides to the corner. Puck squirts back towards the far side. Breton collides with Cole Tarchi. Cole goes down. Puck at center ice. Corey Thomas rolls it around the boards. Thomas... Collides with Jamison. Problem is they play together with the Grizzlies. As the Lions skate in, Nicholas skate to the left side, and he'll poke it off the boards. And now the puck squirts towards Momini. Shot saved by Miner. That was as good a look as the Lions have had in the last period and a half. As Cole Tarchi will ricochet off the far boards at the end of his shift. Grizzlies will make a full line change. Less than 11 minutes left in the third period. 4 nothing Grizzlies. As puck squirts in front of Miner's net. Nielsen will clear it out towards center, looking for right, but it goes past him on to Alex Breton. He'll get it across the line, spread the ice out at center ice. Sekos plays it with a high stick as the puck lifted at neutral ice. Sekos with two palms in the air saying, wait a minute, it wasn't high, but it kind of looked like a good call by the referee, Nolan Bloyer. Question is, where's the faceoff? It looks like it's going to be at neutral ice in Grizzlies territory near the Utah bench. Sekos talking it over with the linesman. Tyler Keston's a little bit of a taller guy, and he's in his first season as a linesman in this league. But it was Craig Peterson that uh, Sekos was talking with. Puck in the right corner as it sails out of play from the corner, got redirected, so no delay of game. 10-20 left in the third period. Grizzlies four and the Lions nothing. Draws in the right circle. And it's won by Utah as Grizzlies skate towards the left corner. As big battle in the Grizzlies zone over to the high slot. Shot saved by Miner. That was a blast and a one-timer by Olivier Gallipo. Miner made the stop. He's had a pretty good game here so far. It's not kind of a fun TikTok. The only way I can ever watch TikToks is if Jared Dane sends them to me. Dane in the office next to me. Otherwise, I've never seen TikTok. <laughs> but Dane sent me a funny one about a broadcaster in this league about a, 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 a jinx. We'll talk about it after the game, but uh, it was... Uh, 
So it was kind of a funny video I, that he sent me earlier today that kind of might apply to this game right here. Even though we have no control over what happens up here as the Lions win the faceoff over in the left corner. A skate around Miner's net. Two lines in the corner. They feed it up top for Galley Poe. Take a lefty wrist shot. Glove saved by Miner. A Lion collides with Miner. Trent goes down as there was a battle out in front. Trent makes his 28th save of the game. 9.54 left in the third period. Draws going to stay in the Grizzly zone as Miner takes his helmet off and will wipe the sweat off his brow. Grizzlies hockey brought to you this season by America First Credit Union. Don't forget every Friday home game is an AFCU Friday. We're taking start at just $8 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Mavericks Center box office. Jamison will take the draw, and it goes into the corner as Bartley gets hit. As Nicholas Gay battling with Jamison in the corner, Jamison comes out of it with the puck. So he'll skate towards the far side, gets taken away in the left corner. As the line's in the attack zone, skating from left to right. As they're battling over in the near side, Robinson, Bartley over there, and taking it's Jamison as he'll skate down the middle, pass up ahead. It, as it goes past, still and fits onto DeRosier, will kick it over to the near corner. Robinson gets dragged down by Bureau Blay as fits over there as well. Robinson back to his feet, continues to battle with Bureau Blay, who's wearing number 65 as the Lions out towards the near side. Penner battles. He'll throw the puck off the end wall. Lions regather it. They spread the ice. They throw it out to center ice. No icing as it rolls off the end wall. Miner will feed it to the near side as Phelan gets over towards Gay. Now John Parker Jones gets it taken away or make that Larivier is also a big guy. As Simeone will nudge it ahead. I think Simeone's probably played his best game of the season. Out towards center ice, Lions re-enter the zone as Larivier being shadowed by Corey Thomas. As Larivier throws to the corner, now back towards Larivier. Uh, glanced off his stick and goes out to center ice. Centerami gets it at center ice. He'll feed it to the near side to Larivier. Back to Centerami. He'll throw it to the Grizzlies bench. And the Lions flip it high into the air. It's gloved by Miner as he makes a, a catch over his head and holds on with 834 left in the third. Grizzlies make a full line change in their black jerseys tonight with white numbers, white on the elbow, white lettering, and professional green trim. We saw the auction for the pride jerseys. Uh, fun fact, the jersey that went for the most money was Zach Sekos's, who went for $800 on the bid. Andrew Nelson was in second place. His jersey went for $700. i am sure the Grizzlies had some fun over how much money their jerseys went for. Slot shot saved by Miner. That was taken by Beauregard with 827 left in the third. Lions won the faceoff, got it to the left point, and then centered it to Beauregard. But Miner made the save as he looks like he's kind of in rare form here tonight. The former seventh-round pick of the Colorado Avalanche is in the second year of a three-year NHL entry-level deal. I had asked him before the season whether he got a championship ring for being part of the extended playoff roster of the Avalanche. He said no, uh, which was a little bit surprising. It almost looked like they only had the rings go to you know guys who are on the, whose names were on the cup as the Grizzlies won the faceoff and cleared all the way out for an icing with 8.30, with 8.18 left in the third. Cameron Wright talking things over with Aaron Tho. Tho in his Grizzlies debut, obviously, um, you know, just a couple of adjustments he needs to make. I don't think he got into practice. Grizzlies didn't have morning skates. He arrived yesterday, but uh, he arrived after morning skate from what I gather, so... Uh, concerned that the guy probably doesn't even know the name of half his teammates or anything like that. He's played a pretty good game. He looks like he's going to be a good one for Utah. Aaron Tho, wearing number 28. Draw goes towards Tho as Utah won the faceoff, and that's Sekos winning another draw as the puck bounces over Senarami. Sekos over to the right side, or the corner on the left side, as he gets blasted but keeps his feet. Raby battling in the corner and over towards right. Nilsson feeds it across towards Tho. I tried to feather it out in front towards Raby. It goes back to Tho on the right side. Tho over to right. He takes a shot. Glove saved by DeRossier. He holds on with 7.52 left in the third. Kind of funny about right. He's got three goals this season. All three of them have been game winners. There was a game in Allen. Uh, he scored the Grizzlies' third goal. It was like halfway through the second period. And Utah took a 3 0 lead. Nice set on the air. Oh, it looks like it'll be the first goal that Cameron Wright scores. It's not a game winner. 
Well, Allen scored two goals later, and it turned out it was the game winner. <laughs> As the Grizzlies held on for a victory. Hopefully Wright will get his fourth goal of the season. It feels like he's been due. He leads the Grizzlies in shots on goal coming into play tonight. Uh, Cameron Wright's one of those guys. Once he starts scoring, they're going to come in bunches. He had 61 shots in 15 games coming into play tonight. Grizz win the faceoff as Fitz will dump it off the end wall. It goes back towards Fitz. Lions poke it away. Two on two. They cross center ice skating from left to right as they dump it in. Does Jonathan Jonette. Pouncey gets hit along the end wall, and Robinson gets it. He'll glide it along center ice. He chases it down in the Lions zone in the corner as Utah takes it away. Oh, they get to Bartley. Bartley feathers it out in front. It glanced off one too many sticks over to the left corner. Fits over in the boards. The net gets dislodged as a Grizzly got ran into the boards by or into the net by Olivier Gallipo as back to his feet as Keaton Jamison. 721 left in the third. They'll put the net back in place. Grizzlies one power play goal tonight, and they've been perfect so far on the penalty kill. Kind of a tough choice for whoever does the three stars of the game and trying to figure out who that is. Some of it might depend on how the final 721 goes, but I do know Dakota Raby, one goal, one assist, and a misconduct. He's played pretty well tonight. You know, you think about the game that Victor Bartley's had with one goal and one assist, and how can you leave out Cameron Wright, who's got three assists tonight? As the Lions win the faceoff, Larivier along the near boards at neutralize gets taken away by Walker. As the Grizzlies peel back into their own zone, now they'll start the attack as Martin will get it out to center ice for Cam Strong, who got his first goal of the season in the second period on a power play tally. Walker on the left side dumps it in. Drozier has a glide along the boards behind the net. He's battling with Strong, but Drozier was able to keep the puck, and he'll nudge it across. Now the Lions will flip it in the air, bounces in the Grizzly zone. Thomas will feather it back to center ice off the boards. Right, looking for Strong, who overskated the puck. Now Beauregard gets it. He's back in his own zone. Hands a little bit quiet here, but a little bit of noise being made over around section 110. As Colin Billick to the right side gets in. He avoids a check of Thomas. Puck glides along the boards towards Miner. He'll feed it to the near side for right. Cameron will bounce it out to center ice. It goes towards Seco, so he gets hit by Tebow. And it goes over to the Lions, back towards Tebow, who gathers it along the near wall. And he'll get it, and he'll ice the puck. No icing, though. It got redirected around center ice. Miner will feed it to the near corner for Nilsson. Trois Rivière took it away. Bouncing puck into the left side. Lines with a shot that goes wide. Raby gets it and stayed in the zone. Brett Stapley, the former Denver product. He played four seasons at Denver and ended his college career with a national championship. John Parker Jones rolls it back around to the right side. Nilsson gets blasted towards the boards by Beauregard. Puck lifts high into the air. Oh, it almost hit the video board. That would have been the first for a Grizzly as the Lions hit the video board in the second period. Long-range pass towards Nicholas Day. Gay doesn't connect, and it goes all the way down for an icing with 544 left in the third. Shame of it is I was looking down on my phone. I didn't see which Grizzly it would have that was that almost hit the thing. Now, it's kind of tough if you're in your own zone to hit the video board unless you hit the side of one of the two bigger screens as there's two kind of smaller screens that go out towards uh, each each end. Seems like what we see is one of the here high atop section 114 is one of the bigger boards. As Jameis will take the face off against Momini, draw one by the Lions. As they'll throw it over to Nicholas Gay. He's at neutral ice now, backing out into his own zone. So he'll feed it over towards Connor Welch. He'll cross center ice from the left wing near the bench, and he'll dump it in as Pouncey will take it. Minor directs traffic as Pouncey throws it towards Fitz in the near side. Jonette overskates it. Now it goes to neutral ice. As Phelan will gather it for the Lions. He'll feed it across to Welsh. Now he'll nudge it ahead to Momini. He'll skate into the left side. Now in the circle, toe drag. Grizzlies poke it away. Great defensive effort by the Grizzlies tonight. Pouncey throws it out towards center ice. Lions get it back. Right wing pass to Momini. He'll step over the blue line. He'll stop near the boards. He'll center it to Bretton, but he couldn't get a shot off. He got poked away by Pouncey. Kyle crosses center ice. Two on three. Pouncey gains the line and loses the puck. Pass the center ice, glances off a Simeone stick onto Thomas. Thomas skates towards the left circle. He'll look for to center it onto Pouncey, to Penner, and the shot goes wide. 440 left in the third. As Pouncey skates in, or pa Penner does, he takes a shot and it goes wide. Pouncey and Penner were signed on the same day uh, about 18 months ago, and I keep getting them confused ever since. As over to the end wall, Thomas holds up Larivier. Simeone battling as well. Lions come out of the pile with the puck as they throw it to Momini, and he'll throw it into the Grizzlies zone. Cole Tarchi skates over there 
and icing is called. Good job by Cole skating down there. Colin Billick's got good speed, but Cole raced down there to get the icing call with 418 left in the third period. It'll be a fun series next weekend. The Grizzlies will be in Boise. Hopefully there'll be a lot of Grizzlies fans making the trip out to Boise next week. Next broadcast of Grizzlies hockey will be next Friday at Idaho Central Arena. I'm not sure exactly where I'll be calling the game. Probably from the studio near the team store, maybe, as Grizzlies will be over in Boise. And who knows? We'll maybe start a GoFundMe and see if we can get out to Boise ourselves as the Lions win the faceoff and ice the puck again. Four tens left in the third period. Utah leads 4 0. Grizz have outshot the Lions 33 to 29. And you know, for the Grizzlies, this homestand kind of started a bit rough, getting swept in a three-game set by Idaho, having been outscored 13 to three, or 13 to two. Uh, you know, it was 13 to three. Um, you know, the Grizzlies came back and looks like they're going to win two out of three games here against uh, Trois Rivier, uh, who's about a 500 team. They were a 500 club coming into play tonight. You know, for the Grizzlies, obviously against divisional opponents, especially on the road, can they find a way to win their fair share? They split a two-game set against the. Still adds the puck to flex out of play. Cameron Wright was battling with Alex Breton as the puck flies into section 102. We got a timeout on the ice. Grizzlies this season are 5-3 and three on the road. They'll be on the road for five straight starting on Friday night. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Mountain America Credit, uh, Mountain Land Supply Company. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Less than four minutes left in regulation. Grizzlies lead 4 nothing as Dakota Raby at center ice dumps it in. Philip DeRosier behind his net. Puck bounced over a stick into the near corner. Cameron right around the net. As he'll skate towards the right side. Centers the Seco. So he'll feed it to Aaron Tho. Back up top to Bartley who caught a hot pass. There. Great hands by Bartley. Puck glides off of Tho's stick onto the Lions in the near circle. Stapley gets back checked by his former college teammate Wright. Wright pushes Stapley in the back. As Stapley dumps it in from center ice. Wright will skate off at the end of his shift as Bartley has it behind his net. Miners played a pretty good game here so far tonight as Bartley to the – he'll throw it to the near side from Jam, Jamison. Out to center ice, Tebow will throw it out to Momeni. Now to Phelan in the right side. He'll skate towards the slot. Now he's on the left side. Takes a shot saved by Miners. It glanced off him. Momeni feeds it out in front. Puck at the side of the net as Momeni will wrap it around towards the near side. Tebow gets it. And he'll throw it towards the slot. Grizzlies poking out to center ice. Robinson has a bounce off him and rolls towards the Grizzlies bench. Jamison gathers it, skates in from the right side, and he'll dump it in as he crossed the offensive line. As puck over in the right corner. Fitz gets there. Matthew Brodeur will feed it across. As the Lions with a long-range pass, it's off the stick of Jonathan Jonette and deep into the Grizzlies zone. Miner behind his net will hand it off to Martin. Bryson skates down the middle. He crossed the center ice logo. Now he'll veer off to the right as he stepped over the line, but offside is a call. It was made by Tyler Keston. Draw comes back to neutral ice with 2.23 left in the third. We've had a lot of fun here on the homestand. Grizzlies look like they're going to go to 2-4 and four on the homestand, and with a victory, the Grizzlies will return to the 500 mark as they are 7-8 and eight coming into play tonight. Trois Riviere, if they uh, don't have a miracle here at the end, scoring four, they'll be seven, eight, and one. As the Lions win the face off, they skate towards the offensive blue line. They get it poked away as Cam Strong gets divorced from the puck as it rolls towards Corey Thomas of Utah. Martin with a rink wide pass to Simeone. It glanced off his stick and rolls along the wall as 
Drossier throws it back towards the near side. Billet collides with Thomas. Center ice Beauregard trying to dump it in. Rolls towards Larivier. On to Cole Tarchi. Will feed it across. It glanced off the skate of Cam Strong. Grizzlies make a line change. 145 and counting left in the third. As Breton skates down the middle, he'll toss it to his left. Nicholas Gay, tough angled shot saved by Miner. Grizzlies will lift it high into the air, not close to the video board, and it's going to be icing with 133 left here in the third. Lines are up to 30 shots while the Grizzlies have taken 33. If you haven't followed the Grizzlies this weekend, forward Taryn Pfizer yesterday was called up to the AHL's Colorado Eagles uh, on November 24th, which was three days ago on Thanksgiving, Brandon Cutler was loaned to the Belleville Senators. He joins Grizzly forward Kyle Betts, who's still in Belleville. Those guys are in Belleville now as Johnny Walker crosses the center ice and dumps it in after Utah won the faceoff. 122 and counting left in the third as Utah's up by four. As Gay over to Stapley, he'll skate in as he gets around Nilsson. Stapley stops. He'll drop it out in front. Uh, one too many passes by the Lions as they tried to drop it off in the slot. Nobody was home. Johnny Walker will feed it out towards the Lions' blue line. Grizzlies make a line change. So do the Lions. One minute left in the third period. As Lions skate down the middle, they'll feed it over to the, left, the right side looking for Phelan. As Thomas will get it ahead towards right. Now back to Phelan. Phelan. Battling with Thomas, Phelan throws to the corner as the Lions. Momeni throws it up top for Gallipo, but it exits his own. 40 seconds left, Trent Miner standing in his crease as the Grizzlies get it with Raby. He'll toss it to right, who gets hit in the back by Jonette. Right goes down, no call, as the Lions feed it out to center ice for Phelan. He tried to dump it in and hit off of Thomas. Phelan will now nudge it ahead in the zone, bro door, but the linesman called him offside. 22 seconds left in the third period. Ryan Knaswich looking on. It's actually three guys in a suit. Jared Pike is an assistant, and uh, I think James Schur is on the bench. Schur has been on the bench in a suit. Lucas Preak on a cowboy hat is on the tunnel. No, James Schur has been in a suit. Hopefully he'll be back in the lineup soon. Connor McDonald missed today. I'm not sure how long he'll be out as he got hurt on Saturday night. Uh, Lucas Preak, hopefully he'll be back in a few weeks as Grizzlies cleared all the way down. 13 seconds left as the Lions. 10 seconds, they'll throw it out to center ice, picked off by Secos. It's going to be Trent Miner's eighth shutout in a Grizzlies uniform. Five seconds left as Drozier rolls it along the far side, and that will do it. Grizzlies win! Grizzlies win 4 nothing, and there is no doubt about it as Trent Miner, who had seven shutouts last season, was in rare form tonight. He stopped 30 for 30 in a documentary-worthy performance as he gets his eighth shutout in the Grizzlies uniform. Grizzlies got one goal and one assist from Dakota Raby and Victor Bartley. Cameron Wright had three assists. Andrew Nelson with another power play point, which was an assist as the Grizzlies take two out of three games against the Trois Rivière Lions. It's just a two and four home stand, but the Grizzlies on the right track as they scored 13 goals in three games against the Lions, outscoring them 13 to 10. Great to see Trent Miner get his second victory of the season as he was outstanding in net as the Grizzlies were in rare form tonight. Cam Strong scored his first goal of the season, and you feel like it's going to be the first of many this year. Tyler Penner scored a second period goal as well as he now has a goal in back to back games. The Grizzlies salute their great fans here at Maverick Center. Aaron Tho made his Grizzlies debut tonight, and he looked outstanding on the blue line as the Grizzlies win the series, taking two out of three against the Trois Rivières Lions. That means the last two series against teams from Canada resulted in the Grizzlies winning two out of three games. They won two out of three against the Newfoundland Growlers in December of 2019. Post-game show coming up. Once again, the final score from Maverick Center. The Utah Grizzlies four and the Trois Rivières Lions three and nothing. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand. So you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best. Day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. It was a sweet victory for the Grizzlies. 4-0 the final score as Trent Miner stopped all 30 shots he saw to pick up his first shutout of the season and eighth in a Grizzlies uniform. It's his ninth professional shutout as he had one with the Colorado Eagles back towards the end of the 2021-20 the 2020-21 season as he was fresh out of juniors with the Vancouver Giants. So Miner was in rare form tonight, and the Grizzlies got the offense, and you think about scoring two goals in the first, two in the second, they didn't need any in the third. The Grizzlies outshot the Lions 9-5 to five in the third period, and you think about preserving that shutout, not letting the Lions really get any good scoring chances there in the – in the third period, that was certainly a key to the Grizzlies' success. Although it's kind of interesting, I don't know if it's a typo. Uh, five shots by Trois Rivière in the third period, all of them were considered good scoring chances. The Grizzlies had six scoring chances in the third. We didn't really see the physical play carry over too much into the third period, and the Grizzlies take two out of three games over the Lions. If you joined us late, Dakota Ray beat. Got on the board first, 10.58 in, his third of the season, Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos with the assist. It's kind of a two-on-two -two type of play where Wright was in the right side, took a shot, bounced off of the goaltender, then it hit the, I thought for a second it hit the pipe, but it looked like the Lions just had a defenseman out in front try to clear the puck out. It bounced off a Raby and into the back of the net as it crossed the goal line, and there was no distinct kicking motion at all as it was just kind of a tough luck for the Lions and a good break for the Grizzlies. Utah led 1-0 at that point, and then later on in the first period, Victor Bartley uh, was out in front. It looked like a shot was taken by either Raby or Wright, and the goaltender, Joe Ver Verbetic, uh, it almost looked like he was trying to locate the puck. He didn't know where it was. It was at his ankle, and luckily the referee was able to see that it was still in play. He didn't blow the whistle. Uh, Victor Bartley just came in and just kind of tapped it into the back of the net, and he picked up his... First goal of the season, Cameron Wright and Dakota Raby with the assists. Wright had two first-period assists, and Dakota Raby had one goal and one assist in the first period. Cam Strong extended the Grizzlies' lead with a power play goal. It was his first of the season. Uh, Strong was a pretty good player last year with Redding in South Carolina, and the goal celebration just kind of said all that it needed to be said about just that big weight being lifted off his shoulder because he's played some good hockey but just hasn't quite registered to the stat sheet. But he looked good today, got a one-timer from Cameron Wright and was able to get it past Joe Verbetic. Wright had three assists tonight, and that was the third assist for him. Andrew Nelson with another power play point as he got an assist on the goal. Nelson now has 12 power play assists and 13 power play points, and both categories lead the league. So Andrew Nelson once again getting it done. Grizzlies were one for five on the power play. Trois Riviere was 0 for one. Grizzlies led 3-0. Tyler Penner made it 4-0 as he scored 11-12 in Fitz and Bartley with the assists. And that was just kind of one of those plays where three of the four goals really were pretty close to the crease. It's just, you know, the Grizzlies were able to find themselves in the right place at the right time, which I think was certainly key this series. You know, they weren't quite getting in those places in the Idaho series. They scored 13 goals in three games in this set, and I think part of it's just kind of being in the right place at the right time, and they wore that offensively, especially here in the first two periods tonight as Penner. Now as a goal in back-to-back -back games, you know, talk about guys that, you know, on the stat sheet, you know, they were doing a lot of good things, but it wasn't necessarily showing up in goals and assists. 
with Penner, who had 13 goals and 20 assists last year. It was great to see him get back on the stat sheet for the second straight game with a goal. Fitz and Bartley with the assist. And then that was it. There was a lot of physical play. Riley McKay and Joey Colatarchi got in a fight, 947 into the second period. John Parker Jones and Zach Secos fought. Secos was giving up about 10 inches and 40 pounds on John Parker Jones, or at least 40 pounds, and he hung in there pretty strong. You know, you got to give Zach Secos credit for, you know, protecting his teammate. Nicholas Gay and Christian Simeone each got double minors for roughing, but easily could have been, you know, five for fighting. Kind of interesting when you think about Dakota Raby. Uh, we'll get to the three stars here shortly. But you think about a Gordie Howe hat trick, a goal, an assist, and a fight. But Raby, I think it was even more rare what he did. He got a goal, an assist, and a misconduct. Yeah, so it wasn't a Gordie Howe hat trick, but we got to figure out which hockey players, you know, scored a lot of points, got a lot of assists, and also, you know, were prone to getting misconduct penalties because that's probably what, uh, you know, you know which, which famous hockey player did that. That's what Dakota Raby did tonight. Let's get to the three stars presented by Utah Operation Lifesaver. Sea tracks, think train, basically one on one, you and a train. Well, guess who's going to win? The train every time. So make sure to look out for trains and uh, crossings and railroad crossings as, hey, you want to make sure you want to avoid those trains if all, uh, by all measure. You know, let the train do their thing and just stay and watch it. That's all you got to do when a train is nearby. Number three star is Victor Bartley, who had one goal, one assist, and was a plus three. Second star, Dakota Raby, with one goal, one assist, and a misconduct penalty. And the number one star with a 30-save shutout. Kind of think it's funny how they think about an announcer's jinx when you mention a shutout in the third period. I tried to do the best I could to not mention it. I just said that Miner was having a good game, and it turned out he was having a shutout. As he stopped all 30 shots here so far, here tonight. And it's his ninth professional shutout and eighth in a Grizzlies uniform. Grizzlies ended up winning two out of the three games in the series. Cameron Wright led the club with six shots tonight. Johnny Walker had four shots, and then the rest of the count was pretty balanced. Got to give John, uh, Cameron Wright honorable mentions. Couldn't mention a fourth star, but Wright had three assists tonight. As he assisted on each of the Grizzlies' first three goals, and I thought he played an outstanding game this evening. He was a plus two. Zach Sekos and Dakota Raby were each a plus two, and that forward line really got going from about the third period on Friday in the first game of the three-game series. And then they each played pretty well on Saturday, and they carried it over to an outstanding performance here tonight as the Grizzlies take two out of three games. And Kiki joins us here at uh, high top section 114. It was a great victory for the Grizzlies, and I think a big part of that was just that top forward line of Sekos, uh, Wright, and, uh, and Raby. What did you see from them here tonight? Yeah, you said honorable mention um, for three stars for – Cameron Wright, but I also think um, Sekos, too. I think he did yeah. amazing as well. Sekos was a goal away from a Gordie Howe hat trick, and that was his first fight as a pro. You know, you don't normally see him fight more than maybe, I'd imagine, once or twice a year, uh, but uh, he saw Corey Thomas get hit in the head, you know, hit, hit pretty, up, you know, pretty high with an elbow by John Parker Jones, and he didn't care that John Parker Jones was 6'7 and 230 pounds. He, it didn't matter to him. He's just like, I'm going in there. And you got to give him credit. The more we see, the more he impacts the game from every aspect. Yeah, he definitely is one of those guys who's like a leader on the ice as well, I think. Um, and I think, yeah, he was in the fights for himself, but also for his team. So, Grizzlies were without their captain, Connor McDonald. We're not sure how long he's going to be out. I certainly hope it's uh, not not long. Um, I didn't. I never did get an update as to you know how long he'll be out. He got hurt in the second period last night, and um, he had to be helped off by Dylan Fitz and the Grizzlies trainer Colin Lee. Didn't play today, and I'm not sure how long he'll be out. Uh, I know James Shear is coming along nicely. He got a workout in earlier today on the ice, and he he got injured the third game of the season. We haven't seen him since, but it looks like he's coming along strong. And and uh, Lucas Preak, I think, is a few weeks away. I'm not really sure how long, but uh, I think Preak will, um, you know, Preak will uh, hopefully be back soon. And he was outstanding in the four games he played earlier this year. But for the Grizzlies, having lost five in a row going into last night's game, it was critical to kind of get off the schneid on Saturday and then Sunday with the series on the line. Came up with a great effort and picked up the two standings points in Kiki. It's now a five-game road trip, two in Idaho and three in Jacksonville. 
and it's going to be a big road trip for the Grizzlies, who are 5-3 and three on the road this season. What do you think is a good barometer? If the Grizzlies can go 3-2, uh, and two, maybe 4-1 and one on the trip, you know, to call it a good one? Yeah, I think um, hopefully McDonald and maybe Perry can come on the trip with them. I think that would help the Grizzlies as well. Yeah, I hope so. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, you think about uh, missing a guy like Connor McDonald and the leadership and really what he does away from the puck, you know, being so critical. And I think because of that, you know, you needed to see other defensemen step up. And I thought Corey Thomas played maybe his best game of the year. Um, Kyle Pouncey, I thought, was reliable. And Bartley, you know, Bartley's been outstanding the last two games, you know, multiple point games in each of his last two. And Aaron Tho making his Grizzlies debut. Uh, I thought he was outstanding. You can't forget about Andrew Nelson. I think he's having an outstanding season and really just, once again, played a good game here this evening. The defensive effort for the Grizzlies, probably the best I've seen since the Grizzlies got a near shutout in Idaho in the third game of the season. Yeah, and we had a lot of penalty kills, too, that I think um, our defense and Trent Minor did fantastic at killing. Yeah, the penalty kill was certainly strong. That's Kiki Crum, and there's our, there, there he is right there in Section 114. I think we got to talk to Guy. As uh, he was the PA announcer, I really liked how he described uh, when the um, when, when the, well, I think it was the Grizzlies when they are back at full strength, kind of went a little bit in slow motion with it, and the Grizzlies are back at full strength. As we were joined by the PA announcer for yesterday and today, Guy Carenza, and uh, had to be a fun experience once again as the Grizzlies this time on the winning effort, winning four nothing. But uh, had to be a lot of fun being down there this afternoon with maybe the best seat in the house. Oh, it was so much fun, Tyson. It really right close up, up, up against the action there. There's some really big hits down there by the scorer's table. And uh, what a win for the Grizzlies. I mean, it, it, perfect. Really, you can't, you can't get better than that. The power play was strong. It was a great defensive effort. I thought Aaron Tho in his Grizzlies debut looked good. Uh, Victor Bartley, once again, uh, with a strong performance, Andrew Nilsson, and all the rest all the rest of the defensemen. And that was by far Trent Miner's best performance of the season. You know, with a 30-save shutout, that looked like vintage Trent Miner from last season. Yeah, Tyson, he looked really sharp tonight, and uh, I think we're starting to see this Grizzlies team kind of come around. You know, we, figured, we asked about a week ago, will the Grizzlies find their way? And they did. They found their way throughout this series. And I think the changing point was the turning point was after that first loss against the Lions – uh, on Friday, you know, I think coaches pulled those guys aside and probably said something of, you know, we're, we're almost there. You know, yeah. just give it your all. Don't play a sloppy game. Just get it together. Just play your hardest, and we can probably get a win. And they did. The Grizzlies cranked out a win last night. It was a sloppy game, but they got the win, and I think they needed that win. And they rallied behind that, and they put up a, an outstanding performance today. Well, they didn't take much time getting the glass out. Uh, there's going to be some G League basketball tonight, as I think the SLC Stars – are going to be in town tomorrow night. I think the Stars will be there. I think the Jazz will be downtown. Grizzlies will start a five-game road trip on Friday against Idaho. Two in Idaho, and then three against Jacksonville. Has got quite a few former Grizzlies on their roster, and I certainly hope that they stay on that roster over the next couple of weeks. We have some fun things to talk about and some good memories with some of the guys that are on Jacksonville's roster right now that we could tell. And then the Grizzlies will be home against the Kansas City Mavericks third weekend of December, and I think that's December 16th and 17th against the Kansas City Mavericks, or actually 17th and 18th of December. And I actually think one of those nights is going to be the teddy bear toss. And so make, we got to get test your arm strength out, and we'll talk about that a lot during the five road games because we want to make sure that we have a ton of teddy bears here for teddy bear toss. And, uh, you know, overall, I think that you talk about ending the homestand on the right note. Obviously, the, you know, getting swept by Idaho is tough, and then starting out the series against 12 Riviera, allowing the six goals, but coming back strong, winning back-to-back -back games, I think has got Utah back on the right track. Yeah, Tyson, I really thought coming into this series that the Grizzlies needed to at least win two out of two out of the three. And so for them to come out there and do this and get those two wins out of the three, and they look sharp in all three games. They could have won that first game. So for them to come out and get two out of the three wins, that's big heading into Idaho. That's some big momentum that they're riding. And we'll see if they can get it done against the Steelheads. Hopefully for Friday and Saturday, we'll be in the studio near the team store and be able to give it the action. If not, I'm not sure where we'll be. Could be in Boise. <laughs> it could be here. If there's no events at Maverick Center, and we'll have some fun as Grizzlies take on the Idaho Steelheads, who are in first place in the Mountain Division. Guy, any final thoughts here as uh, we head out? We had a great crowd here at the Maverick Center today. 
And the Grizzlies rallied behind that. We're able to get a win here. And I think the momentum's in their favor going into Idaho. It's going to be a tough challenge. The Steelheads are a pretty fine team this year, but no, I like the Grizzlies' chances. Hey, we did see a puck hit the video board for the first time. It was a lion. It wasn't a Grizzly, but it was interesting to see, uh, you know, what happened. And, you know, really the rule is, you know, you're in your own zone. You throw it off the video board. Faceoff's going to come back to your own zone. Interesting. I didn't know about that rule, but I guess we do know now. Who's going to be the first Grizzly to hit the video board? I think it's going to be Andrew Nelson. I would have to say Andrew Nelson. So you're going with Nelson. Uh, yeah. We'll have to ask Tim Broussard. Kiki, I think, was going to go with Cameron Wright as the first Grizzly to hit the video board. Uh, we'll bet. We'll have a dinner bet on who's going to be the first Grizzly to hit the video board in upcoming home games. I believe we've already set the over-under on pucks hitting the board at two, right? Well, we're at one so now, two, so we're, it's, we're, uh, we're there. halfway there. And uh, one other thing, Dakota Raby had one goal, one assist, and he had a misconduct. Is that more rare, and is that, that a bigger feat than the Gordy Howe hat trick of a goal, <laughs> an assist, and a fight? It's a pretty big feat. Um, you know, I was down there in between the, the penalty boxes there, and, it looked like there and, him, and him and Riley McKay were, they, they were going at it. It was, it, was, uh, it was Raby in the penalty box with Cole Tarchi, and Riley McKay was sitting to my left. And McKay was chirping him, and he was saying – once we get out of here, we're dropping the gloves. We we might as well just leave the, the gloves in the box. Yeah. <laughs> like, as soon as we get out there, we're going. And Cole Tarchi's like, no. You know, they stand up. They get ready to go out. And um, McKay's was- like, are we dropping them four? And Cole Tarchi's like, no. No, I don't need to give that give you that momentum. And Cole Tarchi threw him, threw him off because uh, he lied. I he think- went out there, <laughs> think- and he was like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> caught him off guard there, and he fought McKay. And, uh, yeah, McKay was chirping him all throughout that time in the box. And Dakota Raby and – Cole Tarchi were standing up for themselves, but you know, I don't think he expected uh, Cole Tarchi to drop the gloves on that fight. This so uh, interesting little exchange there in the in between the benches or the boxes there. And you're you got the best seat in the house. You're, you're hearing that whole interaction. Good thing you had turned the mic off there. <laughs> yeah. The whole arena be able to hear that. Yeah, they were. Uh, there were some harsh words exchanged, <laughs> but uh, I got to tell you, uh, Cole Tarchi and. And Raby, they got some really nice chirps. So props to those guys. <laughs> Great one-timers. I imagine Johnny Walker's pretty good with a one-timer, and I hear Connor McDonald is pretty good with a one-liner as well. Dakota Raby's feisty, man. He's got some. He's got some good lines in him. He was outstanding this series, and kind of started with the third period on Friday, and then carried over to a good game on Saturday. Got the game-winning assist, and then you know played a great game. Probably would have been the number one star had Trent Miner not gotten the shutout this afternoon but uh yeah it was a lot of fun and uh, friday i guess we'll do it over again uh, as the grizzlies take on the idaho steelheads sounds good tyson thanks for having me next grizzlies broadcast will be on friday night 650 pregame show 710 face off once again for kiki crumb and guy Carenza, i'm tyson whiting once again in two hours and 31 minutes and in front of 2735 for at maverick center trent minor gets his eighth shutout in a grizzlies uniform and ninth shutout professionally as grizzlies Get three assists from Cameron Wright and one goal and one assist from Dakota Raby and Victor Bartley as they defeat the Trois Rivières Lions by a score of 4-0. I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.